Yeah, I don't know if I can physically show you guys this. Um, but here we go. So my friend sent this to me. Friend of the show, Frank, sent me this. Um, Samira Khan, who you may know as a Twitter dipshit. Do I have her blocked, really? All right. I guess that explains why I haven't been seeing her posts. Uh, very annoying posts. Very bad quality posts. One of the worst to ever do it. Uh, if you're not on Twitter, you might not know Samira, who really produces nothing of value. But she started up this uh, Twitter space here. And we're going to see if we can jump ahead to the part where uh, Jimmy Dore and Infra Haas and Jackson Hinkle all jump in to this. And it's called Ilhan Omar is a Terrorist Sympathizer. Wrath of the Bad Takes? True, yeah, I mean... I don't know how... When does the music stop? We're going to skip the music. Liberation Front. 15? About the terrorist sympathizer known <laughs> as Ilhan Omar. Okay, here we go. Based, based. Um, so what is she saying? <laughs> what, what a fucking loser. Based, based. <laughs> What a, what a couple of fucking losers. All right, so Samira's hosting. That's her voice. And Jackson Hinkle joins. That's his voice. Uh, Jimmy Dore at one point joins. And Infra Haas joins. And a couple other goofballs join. She is still going back and forth. Uh, so this is going to be audio only because it's a space recording. Tweet out one thing here and then we will get started, right? Yeah. Is that loud enough for you guys? Because the, ter the terrorist sympathizer we'd love to have join, but I have to tweet at her. Yeah, let's do that. I'm uh, I'm gonna change my settings. As let's well. do that. <laughs> you are so obsessed with me at Ilan Omar. Come talk about your terrorist tweeting at a sitting congresswoman to see if she'll join your Twitter space. In our space. Why does that give yeah, me a very also, Oh, that's a great question, Death groups. Shadow. That's a great question. Causes. Why does that give me a uh, a very like hello fellow kids vibe it's because that's all these people do it's like especially right wingers with memes in general but these people in particular like they're losers selling a loser ideology you know like these could be the wealthiest people in the world and they'd still have raw loser energy Haas is joining in just a second you'll hear him in just a second but that's all they're about you know Hello, fellow kids. Uh, do you like the memes? Would you like a dank meme? What about Peepee -pee the Frog? Fucking losers. ...that she supports. One, Syria. Two, Russia. Uh, the anti-Chechen, anti-Russian terrorist groups that uh, try to separate Chechnya from Russia. Three, China, the ETIM, the East Turkestan Islamic Movement, and also Ethiopia. She's been called out by her own East African community for backing these terrorist causes, the TPLF, the Tigray People's Liberation Front. Ilhan Omar's American, uh, by the way. she almost <laughs> lost her primary because of it. So if her own East African community is calling her out, my, many of them are Muslims, and then she's screaming Islamophobia when, I mean, it's ridiculous, but we've seen this happen since... Um, this is a real show me your birth certificate aside, ass right? they were line of questioning. Islamophobia <laughs> to silence us. Yes, yes. Keep talking a little bit longer. I'm so No worries. Haas, what do you think of this? Oh, okay. the big man here? Anyway, yeah, we're just waiting for <laughs> people to come in. Anyway. And we're going to continue. And the idea that, she, you know, her excuse was, like, ridiculous. She's like, oh, I, I didn't name any of those terrorist groups in the tweet. So, like, this is Islamophobia, Jackson, you evil white male. Yeah, it's like, well, it's like, uh, okay. It's so funny that Samira would say that, like, obviously she's, like, all about gargling these reactionaries' nutsacks, but it's very funny because for her to be criticizing, like, Omar, and Omar's like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't say that thing that you said I said, and you're just, Samira, her counter to that is just to repeat it in, like, a mocking tone of voice. All right, dog, that's pretty chill. Ooh. Oh, I don't. I didn't directly say Hayat Tahrir al Sham or Jaish al Islam. I just said moderate rebel. <laughs> you know, it's like. You know, and there's what, what do we... there's a record of her backing these things, so it's like whatever. I mean, yes, I, I, I need show to show me the money. Show me the record. Her in 
Why have I never? Why? Why? Why has nobody well, ever like shown the evidence for this shit? Like a little stalker, my Twitter account. So I'd imagine she'll. I would lead with that, you know. About the space. Yeah. Let's Are we that. listening to Samira Jackson on Haas? Yeah, well, and I Jimmy Dore later. With her husband a few times, he was like lurking in my replies. The brother. <laughs> no, this is the the white. This is cheated on her husband with. This is um. By the way, there was a a made up uh. uh God, what was the guy's name? Uh, Jacob Wool. That was his name. They, like, pushed this lie about Ilhan Omar that she married her brother. And, of course, these people are just reactionaries, so they just repeat it. Um, and uh, now they've got to come up with all these weird conspiracies about her life. It's This is all sources cited crack pipe. I think Twitter spaces are great for these people, though, because they could just say whatever when they're in the Twitter space. And they don't have to, like... No, nobody will ever be like, oh, what's the source for this? You know? Because this is a recording, it's all audio. So it's fine, you know? No sources. Doesn't have to. Don't don't need any. Why would you? Uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Dude, she That's funny. She she laughs like uh Lando Calrissian's co pilot in Return of the Jedi. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dude, I love her so much. She rules. She sucks so bad. <laughs> let's invite, uh, also, let's invite uh, Shukri. That I sent her. I sent her uh, an invite. Let's see if she's free. Um, yeah, I'm let's make this more mind belting. That'll be cool. Reply to her. People need to know the origin of jihadi, you know, this jihadi stuff. It's actually tied to wokeness. Yeah. The jihadi. <laughs> of this jihadi stuff is tied to woke man <laughs> miss samira concert uh ma'am I, I i believe i do i do i do believe that uh this woke ideology is going to be responsible for a muslimic style takeover of the united states congress <laughs> please come no, on just, dude. they take this extreme goofy. interpretation of islam but it's not actually real it's based on actually a woke version if you actually think about it wokeness and ilhan omar's jihadi version of islam have a lot in common right they're both the fanatical. jihadi version this they're really both, is you know, just racist about this you know black yeah, and white dude, you just gotta on. fucking attack the shit out of people you gotta draw a red line i mean that's really what we're dealing with here and in addition, incoherent she has a white boyfriend everyone should know that it's the boondock scene. Who is he's married to a white woman? <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. I mean. All right. <laughs> oh, dude, that 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 rules. What the fuck? Was good now. She home wrecked his marriage, and then he home wrecked hers. And apparently her ex-husband caught her in bed with this random white dude who was also like a lobbyist who worked as a political consultant for apparently anyway, it's very shady. Or cited crack pipe. But let's stick to the uh, terror stuff. But if you actually <laughs> want to go on, Haas, I, I want your understanding as to how like her backing of terrorist groups and you know these these Sunni terrorist groups in general harm she has. Well, it harms both Sunnis and Shias, honestly, because it's what it's doing is it's devastating the development and it's de devastating the societies of almost all of these countries. It's infecting them. You know, she's supporting it in the name of democracy, the extremism of wokeness and the Soros democratic agenda. Oh, so oh, 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 George Soros, name drop, name drop. Shout out, <laughs> shout out, shout out. Oh, by the way, uh, here's a really funny Merrick tweet about this situation that you guys should look at. Um, reminder that Samira Khan unironically supports the Taliban. Let's look at this. Uh, so Jackson Hingle says, remember this, you support terrorists like Jaish al-Islam, al HTS, al-Nusra, and al-Qaeda in their bloody campaigns against the Syrian people and government. 88.7% of Syrians voted for Assad in 2014. 73.4% turnout with observers from 30-plus countries. Assad a serious democratic leader. Yeah, 
Uh, <laughs> Ilhan Omar says, where in that tweet does it say I support any of the groups you just mentioned? You seem delusional and clearly desperate to create connections between me and terrorism, which is repulsive and terrifying. Tamir Khan says, he's right, you're a terrorist sympathizer. Your own East African community has called you out for supporting terrorist groups in uh, HOA, so don't play dumb. Uh-huh. Interesting. So this is it right here. Um, uh, we are. This is a different Twitter space Samira Khan was in. We are hosting a Twitter space with the Afghan Taliban to discuss the detainment of Andrew Tate. They are worried about Andrew Tate, and yet they are asking us if he's free yet. They say Westerners need Andrew Tate because we are oppressed by feminists. And then host Samira Khan, Andrew Tate with Taliban. Uh, that's crazy, dude. Yo. Yo, Amar Khan, real? Very real. As a fellow Khan, she sucks. That's so so real. Yeah, it's it's it it rules um that these people could just say anything. You just make stuff up. That's pretty killer. Hate Islamic extremism, except we will work with the Taliban though. We will we will talk to the Taliban and negotiate with them and we agree with them about feminism being bad cool cool dude that's pretty chill um also as a like kind of a it's just like a separate thought but what the fuck <laughs> pretty much goes hand oh, in hand dude. with the jihadi agenda and it morphs into isis which is what we saw in syria it's what we saw in iraq and that's exactly what Ilhan omar supports while she is in bed with a white man claiming to be muslim listen all i gotta say is if Elhan Omar is mad that she can't date me, she can just say that instead of projecting her sexual frustrations onto Twitter debates, you creepy weirdo. <laughs> yeah. Normal way to and, talk um, about a woman. I think what's even more um, harmful is her <laughs> backing of like movements like the ETIM against China because they also worked with the uh, anti-Assad opposition and they're also on the side of ISIS in Afghanistan. So like these movements are all connected, these uh, terrorist causes. But I, I'm actually looking to get one of my Ethiopian uh, or Eritrean friends in here to talk about her, her terrorists, about the terrorist cause that she backs in East Africa to overthrow the uh, leader of uh, Ethiopia. Uh, what I don't get is would be it's pretty like, chill. why would you, why would you like, provoke this commentary it's like she's trying to act like she's not a terrorist you know because like you know someone made this you know isis meme about her but notice the shift by the way that she supports you guys notice the uh, shift you notice the shift she's trying to act like she's not a terror so now they're just calling her a terror terrorist that's a that's a little sh a little bit of a shift there tonally so first it's sympathizer now it's she's a terrorist Oh, I'm sorry. So nothing, none of the facts are relevant here. We're just kind of making it up as we go, I guess. That's interesting. Interesting that they would reveal that. But go on, please, friends. Thank you. Israel, Sham al Nusra al Qaeda. I mean, they they have the same ambitions as Daesh as ISIS, and uh, so it's like, why would you, why would you bring this 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 commentary onto yourself? when it's so obvious who you support. She wants to paint herself as a victim, right? So if she highlights that, you know, oh, like, they're trying to paint me as ISIS, the right wing, so, like, you know, and then all her DSA simp that's so, that's so That's so funny for Samira to say that when she literally just did that. Oh, they're trying to paint me as ISIS. Samira, you literally just said she's, like, ba like you, somebody in your Twitter space that you agree with, who you invited in, literally just said that it's just like yeah the stuff ilhan omar supports is just like isis and then you were like you nodded along you were like yeah yeah absolutely so why are you doing this little voice for your impression of ilhan omar like oh she wants to be a victim well you're you're comparing her to isis and you're like mad that she disagrees that's not that's not self victimizing on Ilhan Omar's part. That's just her mentioning that she disagrees with you. Is that I'm sorry. Is that offensive to you? It's on like Twitter are gonna, I'm gonna defend I'm, I'm, her. I'm gonna I mean, I'm already getting a bunch of hate comments from her supporters. But this is actually you know like a good lesson. Um, this is how they work. They always want to paint themselves as a victim uh, to gain more support. So 
That's, that's why she's doing it. And it's going to work, right? Because the level of um, internet influence that these squad members have. Um, yeah. Anyway. Hold on. I'm trying to add Hassan to the conversation. Well, she's not doing so well in this Twitter debate. I mean, like, I'm either ratioing this Twitter her or debate. ratioing her, and she's got, like, 3 million followers. So tell me how good her internet influence is when she's, you know... Internet in influence? Debate, she's so in like, Congress. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, how funny. good tell me how good Hasan, her internet is bro you're so yeah, terminally yeah. online that's yeah, crazy I, like your, your response I almost your never say that to people well, but you're out of your mind every time she quotes me it's jackson she's just giving all of us ample opportunity to expose her she's trying to uh use like the whole Islam islamophobia like angle to get sympathy but all she's doing is opening up opening up a wormhole for people to actually expose facts so true, yeah buddy. the problem is leftists don't care about facts right um so you know like her uh, i guess our critics would say that we are helping the right wing how would you respond to that yeah, we are helping the right wing because <laughs> what they call the right wing are conscious people, right? Not yeah. Just people. Yeah. Yeah, so wait, hey God. <laughs> yeah, people. You brought that up like you were gonna disagree, but then you just agree with it. This is this is the thing. Like you know that these people are just pathologically dishonest because they'll in one breath, and this happened. This has happened multiple times so far in the first eleven and a half minutes of this Twitter space. Um, these people will unironically they'll they'll bring something up. What the hell? Odd. Me weird. Um. Yeah, I don't know. They'll they'll bring stuff up. Use like a wave tone on them. I don't think. Um, I don't know, like, they'll bring stuff up and have people be like, oh, uh, you know, th these people will say that we're helping the right wing, or, you know, they'll, they'll say that we're calling her ISIS, and yeah, we are doing that. And it's like, so then why would you complain about them pointing out that you're doing it? Be is it because you know that your politics are unpalatable to, like, literally everybody? That nobody in their right mind would think that you're, that you sound even remotely sane here? Is that is that why? Like, come on, dog. Let's let let's be let's be for real for just a second here. Be for real. Shut up. Like you're you're out of your mind. It's you're complaining about people offering characterizations of your beliefs and your actions that you yourself have offered. Please, like <laughs> this is you you're 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 grotesquely goofy. This is so silly who are against the sexualization of children and like all of these gender they really need to notice the pattern they say you know they say oh we just support the democracy and the protesters and all these people who have scarves and they're you know they have glasses and whatever and they you know they're supporting them in syria so and that's how it starts just like in america oh yeah we're just supporting the blm protesters we're just supporting all these people and then come the head choppers right then come the jihadis then come the antifas then come the people dressed in all black it seems like a, co a common pattern around the world honestly it doesn't really seem like it's got a lot to do with islam it has more to do with these are the black shirts of the globalists right you look at antifa and they're just like vitriolic calls to violence and the way they do actually engage in violence, very similar. I mean, the only difference is they can't get away with as much in America. But imagine Antifa unleashed. That's what the jihadis were that Ilhan Omar was supporting in Syria, going around terrorizing people, you know, attacking Christians, attacking minorities. And, you know, that's what they want to bring here. It's all part of the same thing. It's got two sides, right? One of it is, oh, yeah, the peaceful protesters, you know, fighting for democracy. And on the other side, you have the black shirts, the Antifas, the jihadis that are coming to kill you and your... Yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, just so you guys... Uh... You can't see this because I don't have it open, but Samira just did a little, um, oh man, I missed it. She just did in the Twitter space as that happened, a little like power fist emoji, uh, as, as, uh, <laughs> as he was saying that, oh my God, that rules that dude, she rules so hard. She's so funny. Incredible. Can't I, unironically like Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. What a what a life. <laughs> um yeah, I don't know. It's very funny. I mean interesting that these people will talk about like the the, the characterizations they offer of political violence. Very interesting. That they draw the line from, oh yeah, first you've got the peaceful BLM protests, 
and then later you get the you get the 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 the, the Antifa and they show up and they're oh they're so scary and bad and it's like all right dog um what happens in between the violence at the protests and the peaceful protest what tends to happen in between that point who tends to show up and do things with or to the protesters in between those two points uh could it be the police I mean that's usually uh, that's usually how these things escalate and like if they're antifa then presumably they're counter protesting fascists Th these people are just on the side of fascists they just like fascists and they'll do the whole oh you're just like the black shirts thing but like come on if we were like the black shirts you'd be our biggest fan let's be real for children it's always soft power to hard power. And the best example is Ukraine. Pre-2014, pre-Maidan, pre it was all soft, soft power. Right so after true. the coup, um, that's when the war against the Donbass began, right? Soft power to hard power. Yeah, yeah, I forgot to mention Ukraine is also a perfect case. You go to the Maidan, oh yeah, the peaceful democracy-loving protesters. And then what do you have? You have the Hitlerites, Azov Nazis, with the guns, who are actually the ones that take charge. So this is the dream they tell you. You go on Netflix, you're watching, you know, you're consuming media. It's, oh yeah, it's just a peaceful movement of... Everything out of these people's mouths is a lie. I need to, I need to reiterate that to you guys. Which they don't really tell you about, but that's actually what it's actually about, right? It's, a, it's really just the kind of Trojan horse where they're trying to make it seem like these are wholesome freedom fighters, and then out come the head choppers, out come the Nazis, out come the Antifas. It's the same exact pattern. And Ilhan Omar has a white boyfriend. I want to remind everyone of that. Why does he keep mentioning that? That's crazy. Um, so <laughs> a bunch of her supporters are accusing me and a few I'd other like people to be of Ilhan Omar's white girlfriend. accusing her of backing terrorist groups. I want you to request, and I want to talk to you. So let's let's uh, hear your argument. So I'd like to say I am 100% Al Qaeda phobic. I don't. I'm 100%, I'm 100 Al Qaeda phobic, HTS phobic, Al Nusra phobic, and Jai Al Islam phobic. And if anyone wants but to not the those, Taliban. Uh, They're cool. <laughs> they, 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 hide it, they hide it behind Islam. It has nothing to do with Islam. It's completely divorced from the traditions of Islam. It's all based in the globalist wokeism. It's the same as Antifa. It's the same as the Nazis in Ukraine. These people are just the servants of the U.S. And Ilhan Omar promotes it. She claims to be a Muslim. She has a white boyfriend. And she wears Why does he keep saying that? She tries to score points by claiming, oh, yes, uh, <laughs> if, you're, if you criticize me, it's Islamophobic. Well, what about your white boyfriend in bed with you? Is that Islamophobic? What's going on with that? And also, I find her bail to sanction Muslim countries for anti-LGBT laws pretty Islamophobic. But no one's going to ask her that question, unfortunately. So she should get into space. And her defenders, her supporters, they should also get into space and make their argument. I mean, argument I against what? Jackson Hinkle. There's, there's, there's a person laughing named Constant. And I'll, should I add them as a speaker? Because they, they seem like they want to debate. Wait. See this person? Dave who? I'll add them. Pronouns in bio. Pronouns in bio. I'll go ahead and add them. I'll go ahead and add them. I added them. All right. Well. Constant. 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 So explain to me why you support terrorists in Syria against the brave, strong Bashar al-Assad. Speak. What a pussy. I don't, I don't Maybe recognize this account. Sorry. I had, to, uh, I had to take out. You said it was Islamic phobic for her, too. You said it was Islamic phobic for her to have a white boyfriend. I just wanted to get that clear. Uh, it makes her a hoe. It, it makes her a hoe. It makes her a hoe. We don't claim that. She cheated okay. on her husband with this white dude. Yeah, yes, that makes her a fucking hoe. Yes, it makes her a hoe. Islamophobia. Is that what you're trying to say? Because she's defiling Islam. A Muslim woman can't have a white boyfriend. Everyone knows that. What? That's Islamic That's Islamophobic. Yeah, it is because he's doing Islamophobia every night with her in bed. That's what? Islamophobia. Huh? Huh? We don't claim her. We don't claim her. Constant. What do you think about her support for terrorist groups in Syria? I know what y'all are labeling as what. I so you don't know anything about what's going on in Syria. I know everything that's going on in Syria. I'm right Yet you're laughing. So you're laughing you're out of laughing at you you're, you're, you're laughing, laughing out of ignorance. You, you called. You called. You called her. I'm trying to think of the words you were using earlier because you guys were just saying so much outlandish. Like it was. It's so. You're writing, you're writing, uh, you're so, so do you do you agree that Ilhan Omar supports terrorist groups? Constant. I mean, she's a con she's a congresswoman of the United States, so yeah, she has to. I mean, the United States is a terrorist organization, so yo. <laughs> Does she support the terrorists in Syria? My man. Uh, the United States, yes, she supports the United States, which is a terrorist organization. Oh, so she doesn't. She doesn't, even though she's in the Foreign Relations Committee. She's you know, one of the leaders in of the Congress. I'm talking about the talking about the way that the United you, States you're trying to absolve Ilhan Omar of responsibility here by saying that the U.S. supports I'm terrorism. Make, I'm yes, you are. Because you keep saying you keep talking about that with your points. You guys are not being consistent with your points at all. Constant, since you seem to be ignorant of geopolitics, I have to ask you the following question. Wait, hold up. I love that you said ignorant of geopolitics because I remember you guys said something earlier about globalists. Honestly, the point the point is lost, but I very I very much do hope you guys like I really hope you guys see some light at the end of the tunnel. There's so much more right, what is, what is hanging out in the Twitter spaces. What is, what is geopolitically ignorant about the concept of globalism? No, uh, you guys are against globalism. Yeah, precisely. What is yeah. globalism, by the way? <laughs> 
What are you laughing at? Oh, he left. What a pussy. He fucking left. So constant, you know. What a pussy. Really, so constant, yeah. He could, couldn't really explain. To me. I was gonna ask him another question, which is, uh, we have a white woman. I think it's a woman requesting. Uh, I'm gonna allow them to speak in a second. But I was gonna <laughs> ask. Gonna question, get a petty um, slap. Funny. Why is it that many POC women like Luna Oi, Ilhan Omar, AOC, they always talk about white supremacy, but it's okay when they fuck you. I don't get it. Right? What? You can, you can fuck them. But white people are the worst, except what? When they're, you know what I mean? I mean, it, it seems like the white man has supremacy in the bedroom every what? night with them, right? What? So I don't really understand the whole, you know, they're always talking about, oh, we hate white people, we hate white people, but they, you know, not huh? in the bedroom, I guess. Let's, let's have Autumn speak. Go ahead. I don't see this person requesting. Something's up with Twitter spaces. It's like broken or something. Um, I, just, I just added Whoa, that. shadow ban for real, for real? Crazy. Um, okay. Okay, Autumn. Autumn, go ahead. Make your argument. <laughs> you can unmute yourself. I don't even know what I'm arguing against. What, what did uh, Haas say? Whatever. They're just bringing random people in. But Ilhan Omar uses Islamophobia to silence her critics while being an Islamophobe herself. Not just personally, but in terms of policy as well. Because yeah, she has yeah, a white boyfriend that she's Islamophobe. That's crazy. And why, did you request to speak? why did you request to speak then? Well, you know, because like Jackson was being like a retard and I wanted to like make fun of him for How getting... Was Jackson being a retard? I wanted to make fun of him for getting cucked by Joan Hill was all. That's it. Whoa. That literally okay. never happened. Okay. okay, here's what I got to say, Autumn. That's probably not your real name, but whatever. Well, it and is. I don't mean it that is, you have... Legally, I shut but... the fuck up for a second. I'll literally mute you if you don't shut the fuck up. Um, I'm not saying that's not your real name because you go by some internet pseudonym, if you're picking up what I'm putting down. I think uh, I have porn adult brain. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely what it is. Um, how is it that people who can't identify their own gender and are confused about this feel like that they're going to come at me about issues that they see about me? Uh, when you can't even focus on your own issues. Literally just my... transphobia. I mean, my shit is figured out. If I can be real with you guys, my shit's figured out. Is it? Do you think it's like 40% figured out or what? Oh, uh, yep, there's the 40% I mean, suicide meme. The grifter pretense between you guys, like, and, like, talk real, or, like, do you guys want a real, uh, well, want a real answer, or, like, do you want me to, like, play it's like 40, it's like, I, don't, I don't think, I don't think, right. I don't think, I don't think you're capable of providing exactly. a real answer. Let's be careful. It's no, no, listen, 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 I listen, listen, listen. If, if you guys want me to not be a... I don't think you're capable of providing a real answer, because you just said I got cucked by Jonah Hill, whereas if you know anything about my life, he dated my ex two years after I broke up with her, so how is that me getting cucked? And also, one last thing... Why is getting cucked always okay for liberals? Like, they're like, oh, cuck cuckoldry is good. But then as soon as you uh, point the finger at someone else getting cucked, what? it shouldn't happen. You're like, oh, now it's the worst thing ever. What? What? See, the problem, Jackson, is that Autumn has a porn adult brain, so they believe everything they see on Twitter is true. So when they saw a photo of Jonah Hill and a girl, and they saw a photo of you with the caption that you got cucked, Autumn could uh... not help but believe it because their brain is poisoned by porn. Every image they see, they think what? is the truth. Just like when they see images of women and, you know, uh, can't really say much further, but uh, follow me on Rumble. But can't you know, really say much it's further. Really the same pussy, the same puss, thing. pussy, pussy. Can't really. Oh, you guys are gonna scream and call other people pussies because they laugh at you and then leave your Twitter space, but you won't even say what you believe about trans people. Oh yeah, literally not even edgy enough to be edgy. Sad, sad, pathetic. Lose, loser, loser, loser energy. Thank you. <laughs> Damn, dog, that's crazy. Ah, that's wild. That is wild. It has everything to do with gender. It's all poor and adult brain, right? And that's why they just believe lies like that. So, I mean, Autumn, what... Autumn, Autumn, do you believe that Ilhan Omar is supporting terrorists against the brave, strong leader Bashar al-Assad in Syria? The brave, strong leader Bashar al-Assad? You need to unmute yourself. Yo! Sorry, I wasn't aware. I thought you guys purposely muted me. Um, it's okay. Now you're going to need to unmute yourself again momentarily, but I understand how someone who, you know, has difficulties identifying their own gender might... Bro, wait, literally? <laughs> they're, they're literally muting her to yell at her and, like, talk at her and then acting like she can't respond, so that's her fault. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. What a bunch of obsessive cry bullies. Holy shit. That's some loser shit, dude. That's wild. Mute yourself on a Twitter space. Okay, go. Wow, really? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I mean, like, I'm not gonna... I'm not I'm really in interested in answering whatever retarded question you guys have about... The, que the question... How is it the retarded? Que the question was, do you believe that Ilhan Omar is supporting terrorists 
like Al-Qaeda, Hayat al Islam, al-Nusra, and Jaish al-Islam against the brave, strong leader of Bashar al-Assad in Syria, who's democratically elected uh, in multiple elections since 2014. You need to unmute yourself. Well, I mean, that's not fair because you, you just pontificated for like five minutes about how I'm, you know, deranged or whatever. Or... Are you going to answer the question or no? Well, they're not going to answer. They don't care about keep, I mean, Samir, you literally keep muting just, me just, every just five let minutes. It, let it, let it like, answer the question. It's, like, it's not even fucking fair. Autumn, Autumn doesn't know anything. Autumn is a porn adult. Their brain is like destroyed. They don't Haas, know anything about politics. Haas, no, you're wasting time asking about politics. No, 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 no. Haas, Haas, Haas. Yeah. No, 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 no. Haas, let it respond. Uh, <laughs> it, I mean, come on, bro. Like, really? Like, your own parents fucking own you on Twitter. Like, and you're gonna call me a fucking it instead of like actually giving me a chance to respond. So this is what they came on. They came on to talk about how they saw things on Twitter go viral that were negatively directed toward you, and they wanted to rub it in your face. They wanted to okay, talk. Okay, okay, okay. No, I wanna, I wanna no, hear. no, no, no. That's Autumn, not. I want to hear. That's not fucking fair. Autumn, I want to hear. Do you believe that Ilhan Omar is supporting terrorists in Syria? Can you answer the question? Just a simple yes or no. Is she directly support? I mean, define support. What does support mean to you? Like, is she providing either, uh, you know, votes in favor of? Uh, or, you know, tweeting out support for making uh, public political stances in favor of terrorists that are trying to topple the government of Syria, such as Hayat Tariq al-Sham, al-Nusra, Jaish al-Islam, and al-Qaeda. If I was going to be extremely generous to you guys, then I'd say yes. But, like, there's a lot of nuance there. What, what's the fucking nuance about supporting terrorists? Explain it to me. Because uh, do you think that there should be nuance about supporting al-Qaeda in the terrorist attack on 9-11? Do you think that there's do you, nuance there? Do you, do you think that both the U.S. For supported forces and Bashar al-Assad's forces can be both bad guys? Like, like the... No, no, I don't. I think that... Baby brain. No, baby brain, baby brain Jackson Hinkle. Just like Ooh, the Jackson fighters, just Stinkle. Like the oh, no. Forces, just like GV, just like... Ramzan Kadyrov, uh, they can do no wrong, just like Kim Jong Un. I mean, every man can do wrong. Jesus is the only, you know, perf perfect uh, person, uh, individual that's ever, you know, lived. But I guess every man can do wrong. But no, I don't think that uh, the fighters of Syria, I don't think that the true fighters of Syria, uh, are doing wrong. Okay, uh, Autumn, what is your opinion on the whole Uyghur issue? And the wait, 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 before you get into that, before you get into that, I have some. Uh, I have, I have one thing. It's about me. If someone just showed me something in my Discord that Autumn shared. So Autumn. You have a track record of believing lies you see on Twitter relating to your poor and adult brain. You also shared a tweet of me saying, supposedly me saying George W. Bush was a communist, except that was a fake tweet that I never actually ever made. And it was made by high progressive, but you believed it because you have a poor and adult brain. Well, and you has, just believe, you just believe you, whatever you, random you, lies. Did you actually think I believed that? Or did you just think it, I thought it was funny because it is consistent you believe with something that, you, you believe might believe say? Wait, but you believe the thing about Jonah Hill, so you have a track record of believing well, lies. Well, no, that's within the same, you know, that's the same territory. Do, do I think that Jonah Hill literally fucked Jackson Hinkle's girlfriend? No. But is it funny to make fun of people that are super, like, obsessed with how, you know, so with affirmative masculinity? masculinity? Do I think that is so funny? Admit, no, wait, 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 How are you, how are you making fun of someone? Hold on, how are you making fun of someone? The high-level intellectual discourse here. An ex they because, with two because years. not his masculinity per se, his performative masculinity. Yeah, but how is that a dig? How is it a dig? Wait, 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 hot, 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 hot. Yeah. Isn't it funny that Autumn... Autumn talking about performative masculinity when it is literally the queen of performative femininity. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, Jesus, true. But even then, it's like, how do well, you... Uh, you say that my, the way that I engage with my gender is performative, but you're literally transgender. So true, buddy. So true. Hold up, hold up. How do you, how do you package that as an own? Like, a, a man has an ex from three years ago that he broke up with. So every man who has an ex-girlfriend from, it's like, a, ten years ago, joke. that's somehow a dig at them. I don't, I don't understand a why. Like, how does that make humorless sense? humorless fucking I fascist. I you know how you guys think I am performing femininity. You know, as you are clearly aware, I don't have pronouns in my bio. You know, so, like, you're, it's clear to you that what I'm at least going for... I see, I see your profile picture. That's how. So what gender do you identify as? What gender do I identify as? I think that's pretty obvious to both of you. It's really not. Honestly, in this day and age, it's really not. There's like 72 neo pronouns. I, it could be any number one of them. Remember when Jackson Hinkle right, used to pretend see, he like, was progressive? Do you see like me like making that that decision? That's crazy. Like Autumn, what we're trying to say is, do you think there could possibly be a correlation between your affliction and your tendency to just kind of like believe lies you see on the internet immediately oh, when there's an image affliction. attached? Wow. I mean, not at all. Like, if you're going to reference the George Bush was a communist thing, like, that's dunking on you because you say retarded shit all the time. Do you disagree name with one, name, name one retarded thing I've ever said. You, you called Genghis Khan a communist, bro. Like, can that you... was not, okay, how was that, how was that retarded? Let's get into that. How was that retarded? Well, I mean, first off, the, 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 the entire premise of socialism didn't even exist in that time period. How can you attribute that? Do you have a source? How can do you, you have attribute... a source? That's fine. You just made a claim. Well, can no. you back that claim up with substance? Well, no, like you're making the same claim that like... Well, well, well. You're making Dude, the same claim feudal and... Wait, hang on. That's, like, a, that's a feudal and pre-feudal era. Yeah. <laughs> that's... Oh my god. What centers of production would... would uh... 
I, I don't even understand, like, what... Yeah, no, she, she's completely right to say that. Like, there's no basis. It's a baseless belief. Maelstrom is pretty cool. It's a pretty cool tank. Like one of the Titan villains, the Disney's Hercules. Cool. Anyway. Jesus was a socialist. Jesus was not a yeah, socialist under our understanding of socialism. Jesus, Jesus wasn't a socialist. He was a capital C communist. But I want to ask you Wait, a question. No, I'm actually really interested to hear how Jesus was. What's capitalist. the basis? Please tell me. I said he was a capital C communist. You porn addled. You, see, you have a porn addled brain. You heard me say something. You assumed I said capitalist because you these, immediately your brain, your porn addled brain. These people are so one note. They have to just keep repeating the same what I was shit saying before and you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I fucking misheard I, you. I, I am curious I though. You, I am, and that means I, am I watch curious. a lot of porn. Sure. Dude. You have, you have I, a porn. You have a porn addled brain. I am curious, though. So, Autumn, you've been able to clearly and definitively state that Ilan Omar supports terrorists in Syria. So you can see it on that point. No, 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 I didn't, Jackson. I said if I was going to be extremely generous to you guys, I would say that. That's what I said. Well, what does that you, So is that not definitively stating that Ilhan Omar supports terrorists in Syria? No, you're an idiot. Is the U.S. a destabilizing force in the Middle East? Yes. No, 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 no. My question, my question, no, 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 that's, that's my question. the question, no, 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 no listen, listen, listen. No, okay, well, I'm going to mute you because you're being annoying, so, and then I'll let you see. <laughs> the question was, does Ilhan Omar support Three times muted. like HTS, Jaish al Islam, uh, al-Nusra, and al-Qaeda? Really, it's like all, I rebranded al-Qaeda groups, so I could just say al-Qaeda. Does Ilhan Omar support those groups in Syria? And you said, you know, whatever it means, if I'm being generous, yes. So what's What's the qualm with me saying that you definitively have stated that... Very Ilhan funny, Omar he doesn't understand the concept of generosity. Yeah, I mean, I think I was pretty clear. You weren't. You weren't. Just as you weren't clear when I asked you what your gender so is. So, Jackson, I'm going to explain what just happened. They have a porn out of brain, so they just gave us a tagline of some, like, Jacobin Magazine headline of the U.S. has a deep stabilizing presence in the Middle East. And that's just like, an, it's just like a tagline they consumed, right, without even thinking. And they're just repeating it to us without even understanding why it's the case or how, for example, that could be related to the fact that the U.S. destabilized Syria including Ilhan Omar, who gave her support to this campaign, by supporting actual terrorists, right? Autumn can't actually understand why they believe the things they do. Back, well, hold they on, just back, no, because I, back, I, 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 was, I was quite clear on what I said. I'm pretty sure I, I was quite clear. And no. you don't have to be, you know, you don't have to be Pat Sock or whatever to understand the nuance of what I was saying. Autumn, can well, you... Okay, okay, wait, 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 hold on, Explain to me, like, don't go on some diatribe of personal attack. Explain to me what is the nuance... That's all you guys do, diatribes of personal attacks. when she campaigns as an anti-war Democrat that's supposed to challenge the establishment. I, I mean, what do you mean? The nuance is that she is a United States congresswoman. In that function, she is... Rand Paul is also a United States. I think he's either a senator oh, or a yeah, congressman. Yeah. You, you genuinely believe Rand fucking Paul is... Thomas, Thomas, Massey. Thomas, Massey. Thomas Massey. Thomas Massey. Thomas Massey. Thomas Massey doesn't support the terrorists in Syria, so why does Ilhan Omar? Well, good for him. I, I mean, yeah, like, like... So what's the nuance? Oh, you said so there's nuance. nuance. What the nuance Autumn, why do you support ISIS? Saying? Why do I support? Yo, I'm a fucking trans woman, and I'm gonna be sitting here we know, with, with we Jackson. Know. I'm, I'm sitting here with Jackson. Why do you support ISIS? And Haas, and Haas fucking infrared, and they're gonna ask me why I support ISIS? Are you? Wait, but me? ISIS is a transgender organization. Literally, it's a transgender form of Islam, just like transgenderism what? relates to women. Samira is spamming the cry is, laughing is, emotes. ISIS Boomer. Is trans Islam. It's Boomer. A version of Islam, just like how transgender uh, womanhood is a version of womanhood. It's the same thing. That doesn't make any sense. Listen, like yeah, it's the Haas, same thing. Haas, accusing me of having a born idle brain I'm isn't going to get you the Andrew Tate beers that you are pulling for, bro. Like, you admit? I, listen, Autumn, Autumn, I know, this is a safe like, space. I know it's very lucrative to get it. All right. his... Autumn, Autumn, it's a safe space. I just want you to do one thing. Come clean. Because we have a tweet we just posted for you right now that was very sexually like explicit and pretty like pornographic in description. What? Can you admit to either in the past or in the present having a porn addiction? Can you what? at least admit that? Because we all know you do, or you did, or you still do probably. And it's definitely related to your story. So please just admit the truth. It's just personal attacks after Go ahead personal and attacks. That's all they have, dude. Oh, thank you. Thank you. How generous. Thank you, Haas. Um... Can't believe this I'm is sure, politics to some people. I know what you might consider to be like a porn addiction because, like, I saw Jackson. Well, hold on, hold on. I saw Jackson. I saw Jackson post a video of Katarov the other day that looks suspiciously hey. that looks suspiciously like pornograph or pornograph. Okay, well let's let's so not would, let's let's not get off topic, Autumn, because I'm going to ask you again. Do you consume porn? And I'm going to define porn as sexually explicit material on a you know more than regular basis. And by more than regular, I mean at least more than a few times a week, right? So would you consider yourself to watch regular amounts of pornography or in the past have? Because I think it's very clear from everything we know about you that you indeed have. The way you process information has all of the hallmarks of someone who has a porn adult brain, right? So just please admit to us that you, and then look at this tweet I just posted up here on the uh, Jumbotron. So you clearly have a porn addiction. And no, posting videos of Kadyrov is not pornography because it's not sexually explicit, right? So let's just be honest. Go ahead and meet yourself. <laughs> I, I mean, that video, if you saw it, it was it was pretty sexually explicit. 
we're not going to veer off topic. I'm going to ask you yes or no. Yeah. Do you have would you <laughs> enough about how the things I'm saying about you are true that. about me? That's Go ahead, not fair yourself. to me. They keep muted. That's no, the fifth no. time. I mean, you have to define pornography. Like, is the are the fucking TikToks of the Waffle House sandwich pornography? Because it looks pretty fucking. Do you watch sex on the internet? Yes or no? Uh, no. Why would I have any need to? So I think you're being just as honest with us as when you were about when we asked you what gender you were. Yeah, no, I, I think I would agree with you there. I think I was um, 100% honest in both cases. And exactly. And your world is a world of delusion. You have to believe lies about me and Jackson. It's all a delusion. Literally everything about your world hold is on, delusion. God, they're what so the mad, lies, dude. What lies have I said about either of you? You said that Jackson got cocked by Jonah Hill, which was a lie. You said things oh, about wait, 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 that's, pod, pod. That's wait, 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 pod, pod, pod. Autumn, <laughs> I, I was like barely paying attention. I was doing something else, but I had to interject here because I was dying laughing five minutes ago when I asked you if you knowingly lied about Jonah Hill cucking me because that was just an absurd fabrication and it's a complete lie. And you said, yeah, I lie. I lie sometimes. And I started laughing my ass off. Now you're asking Haas when you've ever lied about me or him. And you also admitted to lying about the tweet that you put out about Haas and saying that- I don't remember her saying that she lies uh, sometimes. Anyway, so you admitted I to lying she, twice now. I think she now said that she knew it wasn't lied. true, but she was kidding. Like, I mean, I, I just hope you find God because there's something going on in your brain. Jackson, Jackson, Autumn just lied and said that they don't consume porn, but a cursory glance at their timeline sees that it's chock full of actual pornography, literally on their timeline. Oh I just my God. Of course. So I'm, I'm, not really sure, I'm not really sure that's the case. Hold on, Autumn, Autumn, Autumn. I want to be clear about something. I told you that you had the same level of honesty when you denied consuming that you consume porn. No, as no, when no, you no, no. That's... Autumn, 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 you admitted that there's a same similar level of honesty between the gender you identify as and the claim that you know this has been going on for a while now and I, I want you guys to know that like none of this has proven that ilhan omar has some sort of any connection to any terrorist organizations nowhere in the, it's the title of the space is oh, ilhan omar's a terrorist sympathizer at no point has anybody done like made, done any of the work to like prove anything like that just yeah all in their minds? Question mark? All in their minds? You do not watch porn. Now we can see from a cursory glance at your timeline that you clearly do watch porn and a lot of it. You can't you only watch it, but you have to share it with the world on your public Twitter. So are you admitting that you were lying about the gender you claim to identify as? We just want to be clear whether you're being honest about it. Because it sounds like you're lying about it if you're admitting that you're also lying about being a porn addict. You guys gotta tell Samira to be a little less liberal with this fucking mute button because it's not really that fair. I'm not. Uh, 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 muting. Fairness. Oh, muted again. Fairness. What is that? Really the seventh or eighth time when you know you can join in on dog piles with MK Ultra AstroTurf bot tweets targeting me Jackson all the time, and now that you're in our space, you're gonna complain that we mute you because you have a porn adult brain that you can't contain when you speak. Really? And, uh, We're actually giving you an opportunity to like defend yourself and speak. You're, uh, the people you are dogpiling together with don't give me and Jackson that opportunity. So why would you expect it of yourself? Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what exactly what you were referencing there in that, in that last sentence. Because I'm pretty sure that you have had plenty of opportunities to speak with people that have humiliated with you or have humiliated you. I mean, like, let's look at your track record, Haas. I mean, honestly. Sure, let's look at it. Well, honestly, if we're going to talk like really embarrassing like debate performances, then Jackson is going to be the, the real star of the show. I mean, if we can be serious here. Why is what? How? What debate has Jackson lost? Has I mean, he ever won one? You, you saw the majority report one, right? Jackson destroyed Sam Cedar. I'm not even on. I'm not denial, even denial, the denial. Guy that you guys want me to mention that I'm not going to, but like who's living in this delusion now? Like, it was clear that like he was just like fawning for Jimmy Dore's attention the entire time. I mean, do you disagree, Jackson? So that, so hold on, that interpretation of who won a debate is starkly similar to like how a porn addict would describe it because what? you didn't actually evaluate his performance in terms of the logical or factual validity of his arguments. You instead decided to interpret uh, Jackson's performance in terms of who you thought he was trying to win the recognition of. Now, this what? is clearly the hallmark of a porn addict brain. You can't what? even parse out the logical structure of anything anymore and instead how? has to contrive what, what the pathological core of all things, the sexual core of all things. What does that have to do with pornography? It, clearly addicted to porn. And, and, and I would say also, I mean, just definitively speaking here, I think it's a matter of objective truth that I not only won the debates with Sam Cedar in every debate I've ever participated in, but out of all my debates, I think the Sam no, Cedar, Jackson, the, the Sam Cedar or the Vosh debates have to be denial. the most vicious and gruesome. In fact, in both of these debates, I went trending nationwide on Twitter and took Sam Cedar and Vosh trending nationwide with me, as everyone on Twitter uh, mocked the fact that they got uh, steamrolled so hard. I mean, there became a meme culture around the debates I had with Sam Cedar. Just couple, one couple thousand only tweets is not a. I made. 
it's nationwide. That, that AOC and Ilhan Omar are terrorist supporters in Syria uh, was met with the response of "I don't care." And you know, I don't know if you've ever read um, Schopenhauer and you know his uh, his his book, his book, his text on how to win every single argument. But I can, without you know, without making you read it, I can tell you that not in any of Schopenhauer's ideas or arguments he put forward does he suggest the idea that you should just say "I don't care" in an argument to try and win because that doesn't work and it didn't work for Sam's either. Question, uh, Jackson, is it possible to get Jimmy Dore in the space? He just liked one of my tweets, so it's like, I think it would be helpful. Yeah, let me text him. Okay. Wow. Literally proving um, the point, by no, the way, Autumn, fawning for Jimmy for Dore's uh, attention. Why are you always trying to absolve Ilhan Omar of responsibility when we ask you about her support for terrorism in uh, various regions throughout the globe? Various, various regions. We won't prove yeah, any um, of it, but, you know, it's the, the various ones. Here. I would be curious. The various know. ones why you're getting that assumption considering that this is probably the first time that this account has ever tweeted about Ilhan Omar, Omar ever. Uh, which account? Your account? Yeah, my account. Um, yeah, I, don't, I, did, I did get banned um, a little while before, so maybe I mentioned her once before, but I don't often defend I've Ilhan never been Omar, banned. So I'd be curious why you like came to that assumption. Well, you requested, and then whenever Jackson or Haas or me, whenever we ask you about her support for terrorism and terrorist causes throughout the globe, you've, you've basically deflected and you've gone somewhere else. Or you've, you've tried to call well, that the U.S. Well, so empire I, is destructive and backs terrorism, so you were sort of like making an excuse and, for Ilhan Omar. So that's what I'm referring to. Yeah, I could elaborate on what you guys were speaking about to her being like a terrorist or whatever, like my opinions on that. I could elaborate, but... <clears throat> I called her a terrorist. What happened, what happened was Haas decided to bring me in because... I often like comment funny shit on his post that like people think is like you know mocking of. So like, no, if I saw your comments, one, one second, one second, Haas, Haas, Jimmy, uh, I sent you the invite to speak. Just uh, accept it. It should be like I think it's like on the bottom. Um, I don't know, Haas, what were you saying? I said if I would have recognized them, I would have blocked them a long time ago. I, I don't really see the replies on my tweets. Haas, that's bullshit. You you've like you've decided to like comment a certain thing all the time on my fucking post, and that's real funny. And you know we we enjoy you know we enjoy a good laugh from time to time. But like you decided to bring me on because you thought that you could like make this some kind of a discussion about how I'm trans and how that's an, that's uh, a result. You still haven't, you still have again. the question. What is that, like the 10th time, 11th time? Why do you think it's okay for Omar to support the terrorist That's crazy. Theory? You continue to say there's nuance to the question without actually identifying why you support Ilhan Omar, uh, even though she supports terrorists in Syria. And you try to, you know, change the subject and change it to all these different subjects. You can't answer the simple question, why do you think it's okay for her to support the terrorists? Yeah, I haven't, I'm, I'm curious, like, once again, like, how you came to that because i haven't said the word nuance or anything regarding that you use the word for like 30 nuance. minutes you use the word nuance on multiple occasions. Porn, porn addict brain yeah like Forgot 30 fucking said. minutes ago jackson uh as i don't know if this basically can you please just answer the question can you please just answer the question why why do you think it's okay why do you think it's okay to support the war pigs like ilhan who support the nazis in ukraine and the terrorists in syria that was not the question. Ukraine, we haven't mentioned Ukraine once. I just asked wow. you a, I just asked you a new question. Why do you think it's okay? Like, why did, like, why does this have to devolve into Ukraine, bro? We were talking about... We said, we asked, okay, okay, okay I asked you, you're, you're changing people. the subject. All right, all right. I'm going to ask you a very clear question. What do you make of Ilhan Omar's backing of terrorist causes and terrorist groups in various regions throughout the globe? That includes Syria, that includes Ukraine, that includes China, that includes Afghanistan, so on and so forth. Go ahead. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. The only thing that I know of that you were referencing was her whatever in Syria. And the only thing that I was willing to admit to that was that in her in her abilities as a U.S. congresswoman, yeah, it might not turn out too great for the politics in the Middle East. But, like, is she more egregious than any other congresswoman in the entire... Yes. Uh, no, I don't... Yes, she, she is, and here's why. So, Autumn, you're probably familiar with the trajectory and the career of people like Ilhan Omar, who, again, just like AOC just like uh, Rashida Tlaib, you know, they all ran on being anti-war Democrats that were going to challenge the establishment. That's what the Justice Democrats were built around. They said they wanted to oppose the war economy. They said they wanted to end U.S. imperialism. Yet now we find them in Congress a few years later. And Actually, I think that the Justice Dems were built around maybe a couple of other things first before that. I don't really remember them giving like a ton of speeches and, and doing a ton of stuff about war. I mean, I think they might have weighed in on like the war in Afghanistan at the time. You know previously but like the war in ukraine between russia and ukraine hadn't actually unfolded yet when these justice dems were getting elected you know so like i actually that seems like a, a very convenient mischaracterization to my eyes i don't think that's true i i mean presumably they would in some capacity be against these things and by the way they have voted against I mean, in, in some ways that maybe I might even disagree with. They have voted against some of that stuff before, and, and it's it's whatever. But I don't know. Like, that's isn't that a little weird to say that? Because to me, like, some of the uniting issue of the justice stems to my memory 
would be like Medicare for all. That would be like one of the ones that they talked about all the time. Like Black Lives Matter and decreasing police violence, very much ahead of this stuff. Maybe these people, these these absolutely insane fucking freakazoids, think that BLM is a terrorist organization and that's their basis for this. I don't know. These people are just reacting. Not much more complicated, more or less complicated than that, unfortunately. I don't know, dude. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy stuff. This is, we're like 50 minutes deep into this. Explain the nuance of this question while I mute you at random, like, well, like we have a bad connection. I know, yeah. Why bring up the Sam Cedar debate when the Cubot thing exists? Yeah, I mean, it's probably, because one of those is a joke. But these people, like, okay, somebody like Oz or Jackson or Samira, these people are living jokes. They are living, breathing jokes. They're pathetic in every regard. So when people make fun of them, the way that they deflect from that is to point to it and say, oh, these people will think that I, you know, I don't know, name a thing. Like, I, I literally don't know anything about female anatomy or whatever. And it's like, no, they, they think that you're a pathetic man-child is what they think. You're a, you're a baby. And you sound like a baby and you talk like a baby and you act like a baby is what people think about Haas, right? So they make fun of him in a regard that would allude to that, even if it's not, like, strictly speaking, the, the boldest, hardest-hitting, pure, fa purely factual truth-telling, you know? That's not really the point of saying something like that. The point is to look at him and go, yeah, this, guy, this guy's a fucking loser. He sucks. LOL. You know, they're not literally saying, here's a, here's a real thing that is really true of this guy. That's not what's being said there. They're making fun of him. Keep Schopenhauer out of your mouth. Yeah, there's there's nothing. Everything here is so twisted. I've never listened to one of their Twitter spaces They're before. This is just raw derangement. Uh, by giving this either you know tacit or direct support for terrorists in Syria, Nazis in Ukraine, terrorists in China, uh, and in many more places as well. So I just don't understand why you think this is okay or why it's not particularly egregious for Ilhan when this is literally why people supported her and why people like myself donated to her original campaign and were so excited when she got elected because this is what she was there to do and now she's become the antithesis of her original campaign. I mean, do you guys really want me to speak? Because you keep muting me halfway through my fucking sentences. Go, go it's for not it. really go fair. It. Go for it. I, I go for what? Like, can I talk Answer about my what question. you're previously talking about? Or can we talk about what's on, on the new topic? Because you guys keep fucking talk, muting Talk about me. whatever topic you want to talk about, because I know you're not going to answer my questions, but go for it. Yeah, I mean, the topic is, like, dude, do you really, like, why are you bitching about what Ilhan Omar, Ilhan Omar is doing when, like, people like fucking Nancy Pelosi exist? Like, oh why, my is, God. Why, is she your, your, why is she your fucking, like... Because, because Autumn, Autumn, because Nancy Pelosi did not campaign to be an anti-war Democrat, Ilhan did. Okay, and do you really think that, like, she's out here, like, doing as much as she can to, like, make fucking, like, like war, as much? Absolutely. Like, like, that's bullshit. No. Absolutely, on. yes. Well, why do you, why, 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 okay, so, why? I mean, because, it, because, because I had to listen, because when Biden's presidency, presidency first started, I had to listen. Autumn, to Autumn, who did, who forced Muted Ilhan again. Omar to support the ETIM when not every, when not every congressperson does that? There's Congress people who just don't do those things, and Ilan Omar goes out of her way to support the war agenda. Precisely. So yes, she is going out of her way to do things in her power to support the war agenda that others are not, very clearly. Source. For example, Thomas Massey. He I'm, has I'm a star better record the content you want if you keep fucking muting me halfway through my Why are you complaining? You start, Why are you, you, start, you, start talking about, you start talking about Joe Biden, but you can't answer the question. Why? why because like, you, would have to be, you would have to be a fucking grifter like you guys are. How are we to grifter? Not understand, to not understand that Ilhan Omar is way more in favor of our troops getting out of the fuck wow. of Afghanistan than any of the other fucking libtards in the Senate. Like <laughs> okay, I have to explain this to you because you have a poor and addled brain. Even if Ilhan Omar campaigned to get troops out of uh, Afghanistan or Iraq, something that's not even true really, by the way, while they were in Congress, um, you can clearly see how their support for foreign terrorist separatist organizations and color revolutions inevitably entangle the U.S. into foreign interventions, which means troops on the ground more often than not, right? Can you not see a direct correlation between Ilhan Omar's support for soft power interventionism, which actually has always inevitably led to hard power interventionism? Can you not see that those things are related? Or has your porn addiction gotten the best of you and you can only see one thing at a time? Why do you guys keep muting me every time I call you a grifter instead of just being like, because no, it's jibber jabber? Because, 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 because the reason we mute you when you call us grifters is because there it's it is insubstantial again. jibber jabber. We want you to get to the meat and potatoes of what we're fucking asking you to stay on topic. Stay on topic. If you could, if, yeah, if you could stay on topic, we will not mute you.
Or are you gonna speed? Well, can I? Do I do I have your <laughs> We're asking you a question. Do you have anything of substance to say on this topic at all? None of you I don't guys know. do. You guys keep fucking changing the topic every time you decide to mute me. That's no, the topic is very clear. Ilhan Omar is not more progressive than other people in Congress when it comes to opposing well, Cuz, I would be curious to know who you think is the most progressive member of Congress right now. Can you please tell me? I don't even have to name you the most one. I could just tell you that Thomas Massey is better on foreign policy than Ilhan Omar is. Let's yep. begin there. Thomas Massey is probably okay. the best is, out of is everyone. Is foreign policy the only thing yes. that is consideration in your decision as to what makes a progressive person? Yeah, I don't care about yeah. trans rights. I don't give a fuck about them. Yeah, I care about who's going to okay, bomb. Well, do, you think more, do you think that there may be more to domestic policy than just trans people? Uh, the, everything about domestic policy. Wait, 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 wait. Everything about domestic policy. You guys fucking quit. No, 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 no. So, Autumn. Mute it again. the points that we've been trying to make for you. Crazy. Entire space. These things are not mutually exclusive. Ilhan Omar, when she's taking votes, while sitting, or previously sitting, because she no longer will be, probably, on the Foreign Affairs Committee in the House. It, it doesn't impact any other policy. So she could take a vote, or she could not tweet out a statement that says, I support the terrorists in Syria, and that's that's not going to impact any of the other votes she takes on so, any other wait, policy. Wait, wait, what Autumn is saying is that even though Ilhan Omar is bad on foreign policy, her domestic policy makes it worth it. I don't, because, even, uh, I don't even want to yeah. get into that. I don't even want yeah, to yeah, get yeah, into yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I'm trying to explain to Autumn here is that... Uh, uh, everything is about foreign policy. Why? Because if you're not a shill for the U.S. military industrial complex and the foreign policy agenda of imperialism, you can have the freedom to pursue any domestic policy you want. That's the only thing that proves you're independent. When you become a shill for the machine and get on board with their war agenda, you also have to get in line when it comes to their domestic policy as well. The two are actually the same exact thing. They're related. Why? Because the system that we live in is an imperialist system. The economic we, we, system we live in is actually all dependent on the imperialist system that the U.S. is maintaining. That's so, crazy, dude. You ever done DMT? Health, anything economic related, it's downstream from foreign policy. Uh, and when it comes to social issues, you know, the woke agenda is to fulfill the imperialist agenda. Everyone knows that. So what, are, what exactly makes Ilhan Omar redeemable in your eyes, given that you've now conceded and admitted she's a war hawk? Yo, can I, can I just speak to Jimmy Dore? Like, if I'm going to talk to the... It... No, you can't. His uh, mic settings aren't working, so he can't join. I don't know if he's on his computer or something, but it's not working, so no, you can't. But I don't know. You, I mean, Jimmy Dore wasn't in the space for the small space. Please, please. That's... Hi, Jimmy. How's it going? All you have to do what, is... What did, you, like... what did you want to say to Jimmy, Autumn? About, about oh, here your, your idea that he should be supporting the terrorist sympathizer, Ilhan Omar. Well, now it got scared. She asked for Jimmy Dore. Jimmy Dore is speaking now, and then she disappears. Please. Go ahead. You guys keep muting yourself. her. It's a button on the left-hand side of your screen. You just might... press it. Oh, well. Hi, Jimmy. How's it going? Good. Hi, who's this? Uh, Samira Khan, Jackson, hey. and Oz. Hey, this is, I only listened for a few minutes so far. It sounds unproductive. <laughs> Well, what happened was Jackson no, got into a little kidding. Twitter twiff, a tiff, excuse me, Twitter tiff with Ilhan Omar over That's her support of terrorism. And she basically tried to use the excuse of like Islamophobia to silence. Right. Them. I saw that. That was pretty yeah. pathetic. Yeah. I mean, it's typical, right, for the squad. They always use either racism, misogyny, yeah. Islamophobia to silence their critics. And then everybody on the left sort of buys it. And I mean, there are plenty of Muslims criticizing her for her uh, god awful foreign policy positions. And, you know, she still runs with that excuse. Um, but, uh, you know, like there is documented support for terrorist causes throughout the world from. Yeah. Ukrainian Nazis to terrorists in China, Syria, Russia, uh, and so on and so forth. Jimmy, well, you were she like, was booed. She was booed for ten minutes in, in, at a Somalian concert in her own <laughs> home district. Did you remember that? Oh yeah, I remember. That was amazing. And then that's because she supports meddling in the Horn of Africa and Somalia, and she supported getting rid of the very popular president of some of Somalia in favor of someone who's actually a part of her family clan. So uh, she, so that's why she's in bed with the bullshit U.S. foreign policy, and you, you can't separate the foreign policy from your domestic policy. Uh, every as as a Republican told us, every gun that is produced is stealing food from a child. Every warship is a school that's not built. You know, that's the, we all remember that speech. And so you're, for, and that's why uh, AOC was saying at a Bernie rally, stealing Tulsi Gabbard's line when she said our foreign policy is our domestic policy. I remember that very clearly because Abby Martin tweeted it out and said she was part of a movement, which there was no movement. That Bernie was all bullshit, and AOC was completely lying, just like. Ilhan Omar when she said our foreign policy is our domestic policy. That was all lip service bullshit because they're all fucking war pigs. Yeah, absolutely. And I would argue that these progressives in Congress are um, are uh, more hawkish than like, you know, people like Thomas Massey, Rand Paul, etc. hundred percent. Well, the only people who vote against more funding are right wing Republicans now. Mm -hmm. Well, we used to used to be the progressives would give the token uh, pushback to the war machine. But now they are the war machine. And they say and they say, they do it under the guise of we're unified. You're unified. You're unified with war pigs. You are a war pig. Yeah, and they've cloaked their imperialism in, in wokeism. For example, Ilhan Omar, who calls us Islamophobic for criticizing her foreign policy, she is leading is the effort to sanction Muslim that? countries for anti-LGBT mm. laws. So I find that Islamophobic. Oh, that's, look at how you turned it around on her. Nicely done. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, but that's like... Your rhetoric. 
uh, you were like the first dude that was calling out the madness of the dirty war in Syria. Yeah. So how does it make you feel when and you got completely grilled by the mainstream elites for it because you said no, this isn't the civil war. This is a dirty war funded by the U.S. deep right. state. How does it make you feel when you see the so-called anti-war, uh, you know, <laughs> progressives now supporting the terrorists there? Uh, well, it doesn't make me feel good. Uh, it doesn't make me feel good that America never woke up to what was actually happening in Syria. There's, you know, I, I guess they're never, they woke up to what happened in Iraq, but they kind of slept through Libya and Syria. They still don't understand what happened. And people like Ilhan Omar, AOC, and Bernie Sanders won't tell the truth about it. And so people are still propagandized. And that's the thing about Americans, because they have no idea that they're the most propagandized country in the world. They think propaganda, just like Caitlin Johnson wrote the other day, that they think it's something that happens to somebody else. So what that makes me feel, I mean, go to my Twitter, go to my Wikipedia page. They still have CNN calling me a, a conspiracy theorist because I debunked their conversation. conspiracy. Oh my about God. Assad gassing his own died. people, which didn't happen. That's but crazy. again, the mainstream media wants that to be the narrative. That's the one AOC, Ilhan Omar uphold. And, you know, Trump was, they asked Trump why we were keeping our troops in Syria. And, you know, he told the truth. That's not why they want to get rid of him. He told the truth that we're keeping our troops there for the oil. And I'm sorry, Trump told the what? Ever. And so that's why they had to get rid of him. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting off on a tangent, but back, back, to, no, this unproductive right. yeah, back to this unproductive conversation with this woman who wants to protect politicians instead of pressure them and hold their feet, hold them accountable. That is just, I, what they get out of that, I, it's, it's just nothing but hero worship. So it, it could be, it, it could be Ilhan Omar, it could be Madonna. You know, it doesn't matter. They need a hero. You, you know what the funniest thing that happened recently was when uh, Matt Gates forced the vote. Mm -hmm. uh, something that AOC oh, was man. Uh, asked to do, was requested uh, to do by you. Completely by performative for the left. What do you make of Matt Gates taking that action? Well, it was, it, it, again, it's... It, it's not something I invented. It wasn't something that I came up with. I just came up with, I just noticed, it was actually Malcolm, my producer, who, who noticed that, hey, they, they could actually do what Matt Gates just did, I mean, the squad two years ago. And uh, I just, so all I did was point it out and uh, everybody called me a misogynist and a racist and a white supremacist and a right winger. And, uh, and Fascist, so Islamophobe, of course, you know, the usual. That, that all all right? true, all but had. for different and, reasons. Um, so now when this happened, it was really a great vindication. I ended up trending on Twitter for most of the better part of that week. And, you know, it, it made me feel vindicated. It made me By the way, remember when Jimmy Dore laughed as he admitted, uh, like, he he literally talked, in like, in detail about the way that he sexually humiliated Anna Kasparian at work? Like, he literally described it as if he thought it was a good thing? I don't know, dog. What a what what an what an what an upstanding man. Surely his opinions on women check out. You feel good, but ultimately I'm sad because I realized that they missed the biggest opportunity they had to shine a light on Medicare for all and actually get it done because the majority of Americans are for Medicare for all. Shine a, shine a light. People know. People are familiar. How would how would force the vote shine a light, and how would it get anything done? Like, that's, people kept asking that. There was never any, like, explanation for what that would accomplish. It was purely performative. And if you take an act that's theoretical and per purely performative, and you say, oh, you know, why won't so-and-so do this thing? And, well, it's because it's, like, it, it doesn't actually accomplish anything. You think Americans haven't heard of, of the concept of Medicare for All? It, like AOC going on CNN and talking for three minutes would reach more people than like force the vote. Come on. Nonsense. Nonsense. Single payer system. And uh, they blew it, right? And they had people like Ryan Grimm out there uh, writing tweets that are, that are saying that, well, if, if they did force a vote on Medicare for all, the press wouldn't cover it. And it's just, just lie after lie. I mean, it was wall-to-wall -wall coverage over what Matt Gates wanted. Imagine if Matt Gates wanted Medicare for all. They have the media talking about Medicare for all for an entire fucking week would have been the... I don't... I, I First of all, I didn't see any of that shit when that Jackson, allegedly happened. No, I can't. Jim cut out. Jimmy, just... Uh, was it Fox News covering it? I don't really yeah, watch Fox. Okay, yeah. perfect. You're back. No, I completely agree with you. In fact, I think that we should uh, point it out more and just wall to wall. rub it in their faces that Matt Gates was able Man, to do. Man, are you looking at like one bulletin? What you kept making excuses for. I mean, it was really pathetic. But uh, to go back on on like the terrorism question, it's just it's just crazy how they're now cloaking imperialism in this in this sort of wokeism where they're saying we need to quote unquote decolonize Russia, you know, break up Russia like Yugoslavia style and things like that. They want to do the same to China. How do we who go about they? dealing with this? Because we also have who to run into all of these no, like, like these uh, no crazy, explanation. Uh, hawkish imperialists now. Um, so they were pretending when they were against the war in Afghanistan and Iraq. That question is for all of you, Jackson, Haas, Jimmy, so whoever wants to answer. Jimmy, you might need to unmute and mute again or whatever. Uh-huh. I don't know if it's glitching out. Can you hear him? Jimmy? No, I can't hear him, but you can answer. Yeah, I, I, sometimes you need to, like, um, I don't know, whatever. But uh, 
Yeah, I well, okay. As, this is one thing I would like to get Jimmy's opinion on. Is they uh, we'll see we'll see if it holds. You know, we'll see if it holds. But according to I think it was Politico that covered it. Uh, Gates got some sort of a cap on Ukraine funding. So we're talking about this madness of the squad supporting the terrorists. And um, you know, we had this we had this individual in the chat. The, By the way, uh, isn't Matt Peter Gates Otto literally saying, like? Well, wait, hang on. Omar is not the lead. Matt, got, or Matt Gates was implicated in a sex trafficking scandal. Why are we aping this guy? You guys love sex traffickers, dude. Andrew Tate, Matt Gates, Jesus Christ. It's not the most bad, you know, making that sort of an argument. Yeah, but that's, that's, not that's the verbatim argument. what I said, like, like 100%. Okay, okay, so that, but that, okay, exactly, so you've made my point. Um, as a member of Congress that's supposed to be anti-war, you should be taking every opportunity that you have set before you and manufacturing every opportunity that you can envision to oppose the war states in the war economy. Uh, AOC, Ilhan Omar, not only do they not do that, they go along with it all, but now you have the right, you have the right that is outflanking the so-called left uh, to their left on the position of war and they're they're withholding their votes and, and banding together to withhold it's their not votes. so like people like marjorie taylor green who is a fascist who is actually a fascist a complete far-right wing nut okay people like that are not outflanking the left by opposing u.s intervention okay people like that don't like U.S. intervention abroad because they have this mindset where they think that's what we should be doing at home. They want to take those resources, those troops, and, you, and use them on Americans. That's not really anti-war. That's like, that's not even close. There's nothing really anti-war about that. I, I fail to see how any of that is anti-war. That doesn't make any sense to me. They're not, they're not anti-war. They want to annihilate American civilians using the military. They talk about it all the time. It's not a fucking secret. Not a, not a mystery, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't understand... Well, I do understand. These people are liars. They're career liars. But looking at something like this, I... I could not, in my mind, hold these thoughts where we're genuinely supposed to think that these people are quote-unquote outflanking the left. How? It's not... The, the left, first of all, the left is not universally, in all cases, anti-war. It's broad strokes, not pro-intervention. Okay? And yes, humanitarian aid has been used as a cover for intervention. That has happened. I just don't understand how you can look like this is this is ridiculous to me. This woman is a congresswoman, right? Congresswoman. What what about a congresswoman makes you think, ah, yes, this person will oppose all of like the state authority that uh, uh, utilizes and relies upon like U.S. intervention? No, she's when you become a congressperson and you can call me like an armchair leftist or whatever. When you become a congressperson. You become a part of that machine, okay? And, oh, yeah, you can, like, oh, stick to your principles and, you know, oh, I don't support this or that. Yeah, whatever, dog. We know what happens when you get into Congress. We get it. It's not a mystery. I just think it's goofy that we're acting like electing, quote-unquote, socialists to Congress, regardless of who they are or what their principles are. We're acting like that's supposed to, like, be some sort of revolutionary act. No, I mean, it could increase some people's quality of life or whatever the hell sometimes. I don't think that that's, that's a crazy proposition, you know, a little bit more Medicare. That's all right, fine. But people talk about this stuff like, like we've got some Leninist plan for the future that's going to, like, institute, like, socialism in one nation in the United States of America. It's ludicrous ludicrous to have any any like far-fetched expectations on the on these people in these situations it's absurd like and you have to have a child's brain which would make sense if you're a fan of one of these people to think something like this. very very silly so at the end of the day you know like i, I, I oh ilhan omar doesn't abide by like this principle or that principle well is she acting broad strokes uh, uh, in cooperation with American interests in some regard, 
Oh, really? And that's a mystery to you? Why a congressperson would do that? They're the legislative branch of our government. This is... Is is this, like, a tough concept for you? I don't know. Like, it's... It's weird. These people are, like... I don't know. If, like, the cosmonaut guys were, like, ten times dumber, you'd have, like, a Samira Khan or a Jimmy Dore. I don't care if you like Ukraine or not, Autumn, but they're withholding their votes. Uh, oh, now we're taking sure it back to Autumn. money is not sent into a war, okay. a proxy war in Ukraine. So this is objectively a good thing that Matt Gates has done, and I thank him for it, and I hope that, uh, I hope it works. Jackson, do you honestly think that Ukraine is the motive behind Matt Gates's like, unwillingness to... Who cares about his fucking motives? Who cares? His motive is selfishness, and you guys, like... I don't give a guys... fuck. I don't give a fuck. No, There's no, wait, Samir, Samir, yes. Samir, 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 Samir. No, you guys kind of the, think that no. Ukraine is... So, so the motive, Autumn, and, and I'll let you speak momentarily, the motive of AOC and Ilhan Omar was selfishness when they chose to prioritize their relationships with the Democratic Party elites like Nancy Pelosi. And, you know, they, they talk, AOC talked about this. No, that was empathy. Come on, Jackson. That was they, empathy. AOC, AOC talked about it on an on a Instagram Live the other day. She literally said, well, Matt Gates, yeah, sure, he got concessions, but he also had really damaging, uh, you know, uh, ramifications created for himself with his relationships in Washington, D.C. So that quite literally means that she chose to prioritize, as did all the other Democrats that could have withheld their votes for Pelosi in 2021. They chose to prioritize their relationships with Nancy Pelosi and the Democratic elite to try and get committee positions over the actual policies that they, again, can't campaign on challenging the elite with okay he, like over the policies no over the rhetoric over over like visibility politics over chose to prioritize political coalition building over spreading awareness essentially is what we're talking about and who knows if that coalition will actually bear fruit i don't think you can enter into a coalition like that with the mainstream democratic party in america i don't think that that will be productive but it's one way of attempting to do this, and the other way is, uh, I guess if we just keep talking about it, you know, then then maybe they'll have to listen to us eventually. Do you think that's how political power works? If so, why are you so against protests? Interesting. Interesting how that works. Uh, I don't know. This is goofy. There's no principles on display here. There's like another hour left of this. I don't know. Go ahead, Autumn. You can respond, Jackson. Yeah, I mean, can you repeat? I'm, I'm not even really sure what I'm supposed to be responding to. What I, what, I, what I said was Matt Gates did a selfless thing. He did not do a selfish thing. He chose to Come risk on, Jackson. Like, uh, okay, Autumn, Autumn, they threatened him with committee assignments. They said that they were going to take away his position, uh, his, his committee seats. So the same threats were made by Pelosi to the squad. Yet Matt Gates was willing to overcome that and, you know, push uh, and force the vote, essentially, despite that risk of, you know, losing his seat. So you can't say come on when this is documented. Do you recognize that there is a difference between five votes for speaker and 20 plus speakers for votes? Difference? No, that was not that was not that was not how close the uh that we had 19 squad members and progressives of the CPC that we were targeting. I can name all of them for you if you 19, like and, they all... and yet I only hear you guys talk about AOC and Ilhan, and that's it. Well that's because right, they claim, that's why they claim to be the most progressive. They claim to be the leaders. They call themselves the leaders of the progressives, but they simply don't act like it. And Do you they know, call I don't know where you were at, but in the lead up to the House votes in uh, the speakership elections in 2021, myself, Brianna Joy Gray, many others were organizing call-in campaigns where I was spending every waking moment, you know, in the holiday season, calling all 19 members of Congress that were targeting calling their offices talking to their uh you know their office representatives talking to them sometimes even uh, and they were acknowledging us even on the national press i went to dc about 60 of us went to dc in the freezing cold in the middle of the pandemic and we still thought it was a serious issue and we protested for three days straight encouraging them to take the bold position that matt gates took just last week in withholding their vote to get policy concessions for the issues that they care about yeah i, I mean i think that's awesome jackson i think that is a so good, where were you where i were think you? that's a good example where were um, you i was where were you i was here in philadelphia the city of brotherly love um, Were you participating in the calling campaign to try and get them to in the war economy or pass like? Uh, why are you no, no, Why are you dick measuring? I did have to work. What, what did that have to do with the line of question? Very, um, uh, impoverished when it comes to that sort of okay. thing. Um, so why didn't why didn't you participate? You didn't have to come to DC with us because I get that's expensive. So why didn't you tweet about it? Why didn't you participate in the calling campaign? Why didn't you? No, Jackson, it's even better. It's even better. Why did you find it necessary to make enemies of all of the people who yes. were doing that? Even if you would have shut your retarded, porn adult fucking brain mouth. Even if you would have just shut the fuck up and stopped being a troll for the fucking elite, Cause, that would have been better than actually. I think I've been. Yeah, you know, you know, Autumn, Autumn, you got you got psyop through pornography into being a willing soldier of the fucking deep state and the fucking globalists. You do it for free. You attack all of the fucking people who step out of line of the establishment. And before you want to try and claim that you only started doing this because of our interventions into the culture war, I saw people like you, who attacked Jimmy Dore. And people like Jackson just because of the Medicare, the force to vote stuff. We no culture war, anything, nothing to do with the culture war. It was just about force to vote. It was just about bread and butter issues. And you mark them as fucking enemies because your poor and adult brain 
led you to identify them he as keeps enemies saying without it, dude. being Haas able to make so it well rationally known. make sense for you. You couldn't so even rationally impressive. justify why they were enemies. Your brain put them in the crosshairs. Haas, I was extremely cordial with you and Jackson and Samira. Like, I haven't been, like, like, let's be real here. No, I haven't you been. You literally, you literally no, made up no. lies about me and then admitted to making up lies about me. You no. said, yeah, I clowning, lied about you. Clowning on is, a lo a clowning on a is lying cordial? Is, is lying cordial? Like, Autumn, it's, Autumn, it's why, why, is, it's why is lying? They keep you know cutting what, her you know off, what, dude. Actually, Haas, you know what? Very lying, unimpressive. Lying, I guess, I don't know, in, in LGBT, specifically T community, I don't know how egregious lying is and how uh, uncordial lying is because I think, you know, completely unrelated thing, Autumn is lying to himself each and every day. Yeah, but what I wanted to say, though, was that you literally saw, you're saying, oh, we're just clowning on you because you're a lolcow. Look at what made Jackson a lolcow, for example, on the eve of his debates with Sam Cedar. Again, Jackson was not doing any culture war stuff at all. None of it, right? Jackson didn't, speak out, me, against, yeah. he didn't speak out against LGBT rights. I remember it was last year, January. Why did you side with Sam Cedar in that debate instinctively? Why did your brain tell you Sam Cedar good, Jackson bad? Again, it had nothing to do with trans rights, had nothing to do with LGBT rights. You instinctively side with the establishment because your poor and adult brain has trained you to target all enemies of the Matrix. And it's just an intuition. Oh, it's like literally comes naturally. Interesting. Are you guys gonna actually let me like form? Interesting to see anti-trans people do that. I don't that. know if you're capable, but try. Yeah, go ahead. Explain. Why did you side with Sam Cedar one year ago? Did you did you honestly watch his fucking debate with? I mean, I know you did because I saw you tweeting. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me. They won't even let her talk, dude. That's crazy. Did you actually watch his debate with Sam? Because yeah, I was with Jackson. Yeah. While Jackson. Yes, I, was I with know him. you did because you were tweeting, coping about it the entire fucking time, and he looked. Okay, Autumn, I want you to shut the fuck up for a second, and I want you in simple. Oh my God, they can't let Why me talk. Why side crazy. with Sam Cedar? Why did you side with Sam Cedar? Why did you take Sam Cedar's side? If you want to say that Jackson performed poorly? Oh, you have to explain too. why. Well, you know, the, 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 the debate isn't fucking fresh in my mind right now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Autumn. So uh, yeah, that's, that's here's here's talking. where we're at now. Here's where yeah, that is exactly how you sound. Uh, here's where we're yeah, at because, now. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. The they, 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 they won't let her talk, dude. They won't let her talk. Then why can't you make an argument? No, no. Listen, listen. I've made so, plenty of arguments. You guys hey, keep fucking muting me hey, when I try to make. I'm about to mute you again. I'm about to mute you again. I know. Wait. Shut the fuck up for a second. Holy fucking shit! You have like the brain of a goldfish. If you have more than two brain cells, please rub them together right now and shut your fucking mouth, okay? So you've admitted already that you will concede that Ilhan Omar supporting terrorists in Syria. You've admitted and conceded that you lied about me and Haas throughout, you know, the course of your interactions no, with us on social no. media. No, no. Exaggerations are not lies. Uh, is, well, I, is, I, does, I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just direct. Okay, really listen, I'm just directly quoting you what you said. You know, this space is recorded, so you know, if you want me to, I can embarrass you. Go back, you know, and find the moment in which you said, "Yes, I lied there about, uh, you know, the Jonah Hill comments. You lied about Jonah Hill. You lied about Haas with some other shit. I don't remember what it was." And I can quote Great you, you and ratio you into them, oblivion because. Um, as you put it, I probably have a cult following of people, and I'll ratio you into oblivion. But then again, I think given you know the community you associate with the LGBTQ community, I think you might actually like this as a form of king shaming. So I'm not going to do it, and I'm just going to have to rely on the fact that you will concede that yes, you did lie, and yes, you did admit to it. This is yes, like all pot blog, shots at her for being queer. That's so, crazy. My last question for you, and we have other speakers like Outcast, who I, I don't know Outcast, I don't know, but Outcast has he him pronouns in their bio, so I, I can already assume how this is going to go. But Autumn, my last question to you is um, why do you hate me if I'm right and you agree with me? Yeah, Jackson, um, if you would like me to genuinely explain why, like... Just so, fucking do it! Just fucking do it! Yeah, Stop I would, I would, just do it. Just fucking make an argument. Go ahead. Just do it. Well, I'm sorry, Haas. This doesn't have a level of fucking... Oh, my God! This doesn't have a level of dipshit rogue. Joe Rogan fucking... Autumn, shut the fuck up and stick to the content. Make an argument and stop narrativizing what's going on. Stop getting meta. Just fucking make an argument. I can't because you guys keep fucking muting me. No, we, we only listen. We only are muting you because every time I ask you a question, you go on some jibber jabber diatribe that is not related to. So I literally just asked you a question. You know, I gave you full reign. I gave you all the green grass in the world to attack me with whatever personal jabs you want, and you still. And she started saying, "Haas, if you want me to," and that, or Jackson, if you really want me to, and that's how far she got before she got interrupted. Couldn't even That's crazy. Attack me or try to smear me or roast me. So again, I'll give you the opportunity one more time. We're gonna move on to Outcast here, the he/him pronoun person. And uh, so, Autumn, why, if you agree with me and if you admit to lying about me repeatedly, why do you hate me? No, Jackson, just move on to the next person if you want to, because like I have been trying to like literally say anything. All right, all right, all right. So, I'm actually gonna go to Prodigal. Goodbye. Prodigal wanted to say something to Autumn, so go ahead. Yeah, I don't know, Autumn. I've heard you speak for a little bit, but uh, you have the mentality of a loser, uh, and I'll tell you why. Uh, some of the hosts, I don't agree with everything they're saying, but all that matters is the results, the end goal. So if they're anti-war, I don't give a shit, right? They're on my side for that issue. If the squad wants to trust us, like they've been saying they were going to do forever, I'll support them in their cause. So I don't know what you think you're accomplishing, how you believe you're more intellectualized than anybody else on the stage. You have no fucking strategy. You are an idiot. You're a buffoon. And it's sad. You need allies. You might not agree on everything. 
But if they want to address anti-war, so be it. I don't care what his motivations were. Are they effective? Did it get the result that was wanted? Or would you rather just have euphemisms like, oh, the Inflation Act that blows inflation through the roof? Who the fuck cares about words and what they say publicly? All that matters is results, period. Thank you, Prodigal. Uh, nuance, go ahead. Yeah, I was actually just going to chime in on the Sam Cedar uh, debate that Jackson had because I see a lot of people always leveling criticism of Jackson, especially when they see him on Twitter and spaces. That's usually the debate I refer them to where I'm like, actually, Jackson does like decently at these things. Like he's actually smarter than he comes off on uh, Twitter and stuff. So I think you did great in the Sam Cedar debate. Thank you. Thank you. I like the back end of the compliment. Thank you. Um, I'll take anything, you know, I'm a raging narcissist, as they say, so I'll take any compliment, <laughs> backhanded or not. Uh, Outcast, all right, let's move on to the he, him pronoun in bio <laughs> with the collared shirt hanging out of the sweater. Uh, Outcast, speak your mind, what is your qualm? Okay, uh, no qualm, also not here to, like, personally attack anyone. I wanted to hear from you, Jackson, I saw your, like, tweet back and forth with Ilhan. Um, I just wanted to hear your narrative about, like, what's going on in Syria and, like, your ideal outcome in this situation. Okay, well, if you are sincere, then my apologies for the abrasive tone I took from the start with you, because I, this is usually how people... Come at me, so I apologize. But my my take on this is the United States and the UK and Turkey have been funding a dirty war in Syria for the past like nine years now, and um, it's caused mass, you know, uh, you know, a refugee crisis of the Syrian people. It's crashed the Syrian economy. It almost toppled the Syrian government in its whole. Uh, it caused you know millions to suffer, uh, countless you know deaths, casualties, um, and, and just terror amongst the Syrian people. And this, in large part, was led by groups uh, on the ground like Hayat Tahrir al-Sham al-Nusra. Uh, Jaish al-Islam, which in varying degrees are still operating within the, the province of Syria today. And they're backed by the U.S. and the U.K. and Turkey. And uh, again, these groups did, uh, you know, share a common goal with ISIS, with Daesh. Um, and, you know, Ilhan Omar, in various tweets and policies that she's voted on and co-sponsored, uh, she has either provided tacit or direct support for these terrorists. And, um, you know, I used to be someone that actually, don't, when she was running her first campaign, I donated to her. I gave her very positive uh, you know, uh, commentary on my show when I had no audience, but I, I really cared about what she was doing because she said she was going to be an anti-war leftist to challenge the Democratic Party. And then it turns out that, you know, she chose to prioritize her relationships with the establishment by siding with these terrorists, uh, just like the terrorists we've propped up for decades as a country all across the world to destabilize nations, sovereign nations that oppose the U.S. deep state. And uh, like him or not, Bashar al-Assad is one of those people, and she has shown a record of supporting the terrorists targeting him. So I find it absurd that she would feign outrage over someone photoshopping her in front of an ISIS flag when she herself supports, again, uh, those same terrorists in Syria. Okay, I guess if I can just kind of give, I was reading a Council on Foreign Relations article about the Syrian crisis, um, and I guess I was just a little confused because from my understanding, there's the terrorist groups that you identified, but there's also like pro-democratic forces, and then there's also like the Kurdish populations that also exist. So I guess my interpretation of the- Did you cross-reference that against the WikiLeaks release, or you just went off of the CFR, which is a corrupt, globalist open organization? Yeah, I was gonna say that's bait. <laughs> okay, I- don't think it's I don't think it's bait, but um, I guess I can go read a WikiLeaks article that was posted by I don't know who. No, no, go directly uh, to the article. source. Why, why do you need to get the information from somebody else? Can you read direct documentary evidence? You need to rely on the CFR. Go see what the World Economic Forum is saying. Let me know. I don't need to. We know what they're going to say. Okay, cool. Like I can go read the WikiLeaks. I can also read like Council on Relations, Cross Apply, what I've learned. Like I'm studying international affairs in college, so it's okay. not no, no, that's, that's fair. I'll just, I'll just say I'll just say, uh, you know, good on you for seeking information about all this stuff. I would say definitely look at the WikiLeaks documents, okay? Because they've never been, uh, you know, they've never been found to be uh, not factual. They've never been proven wrong. They have a 100% correct reporting record. And I'm not saying that as a joke. I mean, they've literally never had to retract anything, unlike the New York Times, the Washington Post, whoever. Council on Foreign Relations is funded heavily by the Rockefeller family, heavily by uh, the military industrial complex. And it's not hard to find that out. You can look on their own website. They admit to this. Um, they're proud of it. And they break down percentage by percentage who funds them, just like pretty much every think tank that espouses uh, crazy conspiracy theories about adversarial states to the United States. And um, the truth of the matter, you bring up, you say that there's, well, pro, well what about these pro-democracy groups? What about this, that, or other? Um, the truth of the matter is that, uh, you know, there are some people within Syria that have been uh, weaponized and used by tools by, you know, the Turkish government or the United States government. But when you talk about the broad uh, overarching mass that backed the start of this dirty war and the violent revolts against the Assad government, it wasn't, it, it was an intelligence operation that was conducted by the U.S. and eventually fomented into the all-out dirty war that we saw for the past, like, nine years. It's kind of coming to a close, it seems. Um, but again, these are the groups, these are the primary groups. It was not just, like, like, the war did not rage on for eight years because of a few pro-democracy democracy people, okay? Those people have all left years ago. The the fighting forces here, the belligerents, are these terrorist groups that I mentioned that uh, Ilhan provides her support for or tacit support for, not just on Twitter and the tweet that I mentioned, but you can go look at uh, her co-sponsor legislation bills and her sponsored legislation bills and the votes that she's had in Congress. Uh, I mean, Jack, to be fair, it's not even pro-democracy. I mean, there's different, different ethnic and religious groups that are fighting. Most of them don't exactly. give a fuck about democracy, right? You know, of, you're citing organizations that wanted to pull the U.S. in based on a fake chemical attack that they everybody knows didn't occur, right? Great yes, zone, it, it, Duma, it Duma, Duma and Guto were lies. But Outcast, I would just... I, yeah, I actually think um, Vosh and Jackson debated about that. And to my to my recollection, Vosh completely caught Jackson out when that happened. But uh, that would have been quite some time ago. So I don't know. 
what everybody else's re recollection of that is. But uh, I recall, I recall he got him. As a, to my memory, that was what happened. But of course, perhaps I simply have a poor addled brain. So true, so true. And you're 100% right, Particle, the, the Duma and Kuta attacks were lies. But, you know, it started before that. The fact of the matter is that in 2014, when this was all beginning, uh, I believe it was like 88% of the Syrian public voted in favor of uh, Bashar al-Assad as the leader of the government. And he was democratically elected. There were 30-plus international observing nations that confirmed the results. So I think the only people who are undemocratic here are those who are trying to overturn the overwhelmingly democratic elections that, again, were verified by 30-plus countries in violent uh, revolts. Yes, guess, and also, um, before, right, real quick, Outcast, um, I know that this conversation... Most people don't agree that election was legit, though. Okay, hold on, nuance. Yeah, most Make people don't agree them. the last two elections were legit here, too, so be it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, outcast. Uh, this isn't an isolated incident. It's what? not just Syria where she are we doing election denial in America? Not so much. Uh, it's okay. also, for example, Russia. It's um, Syria, China, Afghanistan, and Ethiopia and Eritrea. Her own Crazy. African community. They have called her out on this. They used to vote for her. They voted for her in the past, and they, uh, are, I think, backed her primary opponent because of this. So it's not just coming from like us. It's a bunch of other people. So I would. Uh, but, but, but I mean, Samir, even looking at it, name one nation we have intervened on that we have left better off. Haiti, Syria, Libya has open air slave markets. Where have we made better? Where are you seeing this that we're promoting democracy? Let me tell you something. People would rather be able to go, have their kids walk to school without being blown up than have democracy in some instances. Like, this is stuff you don't understand. You think you're studying international politics and geopolitics, you know what you're talking about? You don't. Like, you've never lived in a lawless society where life is cheap, and we helped ferment that in Syria. And, and, and you talk as if we're the good guys. Like, it's insane that you could still, you know, say the same platitudes and, and bullshit and not look at, well, what's the end result? How many have died? What, what, what have we achieved? Nothing. And when you yeah, look at so some groups I, like the Kurds. Yeah, so I don't know where I was, like, spouting about how great the u.s is like i would agree with what you all just said like i don't think the u.s has done anything good when it comes to like imperialist nate like ventures i mean look what happened with afghanistan like we went in and then when we pulled out like how much this shit showed yeah but their us, point like, is elon supports like, the state and you support elon right, right? That, that's right she's your, your big I, oh, 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 I never said i supported elon like i like you're kind of just putting words in my mouth i hopped in here because i wanted to read and talk to you guys about what's going on in syria because that's what the tweet originated from like if you guys want to have a space to like debate about these like I don't know, anti imperialist this, versus like Ilhan Omar and these like obscure debates, like that's totally hold on, fine. Hold on, hold on. Step the, out, but like that's not what I'm saying. The to space talk about. is titled Ilhan Omar is a terrorist sympathizer. That is precisely what we're discussing. So uh, I don't know what you're saying exactly, but I mean, all of those conflicts are involved because, you know, she does intervene. Or, uh, she does take um, stances that materially benefit the terrorists in, the, that's in those uh, conflicts. And you talked about Syria, and your point was that it's not Assad versus the terrorists, that there was a nuance, like a middle ground to it, right? But that's well, not. I think, I think it's. Like, I mean, like Prodigal or whatever was saying, it's not as complex, like as simple as like, oh, there's these like few groups, like the Assad regime is literally- It seems like they're def the like, operating like, definition of terrorism of here season. includes anyone who opposes Bashar al-Assad, which is, you know, a choice. Uh, don't really, don't really know what to say about that one. I uh, can't say that I think that that's very truthful. Seems like a, you know, I like this guy, so if you don't like him, then you're a terrorist. I don't know. We've heard that line before uh, in America, and I'm not really, I'm not with it. I don't really dig it. That's just me, though. So you have a Shiite sect running a Sunni country, which yeah. inevitably is going to cause conflict. What does that have to do with America, though, with our involvement, with the military-industrial complex funding this and losing countless lives? They're Even not somebody who marginally yeah, agrees with them, they keep cutting them off. Fucking air force. So what's the end game if you want us more involved? What's the end game? When did I say I wanted us more involved? Like, when you, well, I'm saying that the, the, the intervention. You're literally saying that you're literally saying that. Well, you know what Ilhan is doing in Congress and what she's tweeting on her account to millions of people isn't that bad because it's a gray area and she's being vague, which she's not being vague. First of all, I don't actually know if he said that. that point, but the fact of the matter is that Sorry, I prefer. Maybe I'm not being clear. I'm not, I'm shut not, the saying, fuck up for a second. Shut the fuck up. For a second. <laughs> I prefer people like Thomas Massey over what. By the way, it's so interesting that these people are like by anybody upheld as intellectuals, you have to suck their dick so hard to get them to not constantly interrupt you. Like, they are they are constantly interrupting people. It's like, everything that you say that isn't just repeating back to them exactly what they want to hear, they just go off on you, you know? That's crazy. That's, that's wild. That's Is that what a conversation is supposed to be from your perspective? That doesn't really seem fair to me. I can't really understand how that's constructive. I don't know. But I do not uh, carry with me the wisdom of the Lion of Damascus, so I'm certain that uh, 
I, I, I simply... I, I simply am not learned enough. I couldn't tell you guys. I will ask, I will ask my, my personal friend Bashar al-Assad. And I will report back to you all what the verdict is on whether or not it's uh, actually cool and good and a sign of being really smart and honest to interrupt people every five seconds when you're talking to them. Now, Thomas Massey's a Republican. I'm not a Republican. I'm a Democrat either. But at the end of the day, Thomas Massey knows that Americans should be focused on America. And if we are going to be focused on something that's happening external to America, we most definitely should not be supporting and manufacturing a violent coup, regime change attempt, and eventually a dirty war in a country that Ilhan Omar, eight years after the fact, gave her endorsement of, which she did when she tweeted that out. So I, if at the least, like you're saying, well, you know, you're saying like, well, why, uh, why is this bad? It's like, well, can't she just stay silent about this? I mean, eight years have passed. The dirty war has raged on. At least, like, don't tweet out your support for it. But she did that. Mm. I mean, I am not defending her stance. Like, what I'm saying is I think it's a complicated issue. I think it's she does not, have a place. It's not, why, wait, why do you think it's complicated? Why do you think it's complicated? <laughs> I think, like, like what I just said, I think it has to do so much more than, like, what any of us can even, like, conceptualize. I don't think it's, like, uh, Jim Gabbard, this is IR Jibber Jabber. <laughs> yeah, so tell, tell me why you think these specific. Tell me why you think it's nuanced. Do you know the difference between Shiism versus Sunnism? Oh, wow. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> You're telling me this for the first time. Oz is Muslim. I'm Muslim. <laughs> no. Oh, man. Okay. Oh. One more time. I'll ask, I'll ask. I have to explain something to you. The Alawites in Syria are not really Shias. They're just a minority sect within Syria. Syria is an officially secular country. It's a secular country. It's not based on Islamic rule. So religion is formally irrelevant within Syria as far as that's concerned. So I don't know what you're getting at. The only people in Syria who attach special importance to what sect of Islam Bashar al-Assad belongs to are Islamic fundamentalists and Al-Qaeda. So I don't know why you're trying to use Al-Qaeda talking to Shia. Shia, Shia, Shia you, know, you know what? You know what? Guess what? It was, it was when, when ISIS or Daesh, when ISIS was coming towards Damascus and was going to slaughter, you know, thousands and thousands of Christians in Damascus, the oldest city on the face of the planet, guess who was there for, to protect them? It was, it was Bashar al-Assad and it was Russia. Uh, guess who was out there allowing this to happen, providing, you know, tacit support for this and was allowing for the, uh, you know, the flourishing of ISIS in the region. It was the Democratic Party. John Kerry admitted to that in uh, leaked recordings at the Aspen Institute. So they, they literally admit to this stuff. And um, it's really not a gray area. I mean, I think for the U.S. support, it's definitely not, right? Like, that's what we can all kind of agree on. Like, why are we getting involved in other countries? Like, I totally agree with everything that people have said. I'm just saying that I think the, like, way that regardless of who you are, people are talking about, like, this conflict, it's not as, I don't think the conflict in the country itself. I'm not talking about, like, the U.S. involvement. I'm it's not your business. Conflict. It's not our business to discuss totally the agree. internal politics of Syria, period. Totally agree. Are you, are you, are you, are you based in Syria? No. So why are you so concerned about what the Syrians do? If the Syrians decide that, uh, you know, they're all going to wear red hats, and if people don't wear red hats, then they're going to be sent to prison, I don't give a single fuck. By Have them. You know, put the people Have who don't them. wear the red hats in prison. That's not my business. Wait, hang okay. on, what? Sorry, what was that? <laughs> if they just start jailing people for, like, inconsequential personal qualities, you don't care? It's not your business? I don't know, dude. I care. I care. I don't let national borders get in the way of whether I care about people being mistreated. That's, yeah, okay. See, this is what I was talking about earlier, where it's like sometimes fascists are isolationist and they're not really outflanking you on, on politics so much as they are just representing their own politics. Yeah, this is, uh, this is, this is a little bit of that. I don't know, dog. That's crazy to me. It's very, fu very funny to say something like that. Uh, yeah, you can... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, you can uh, behead all the queer people. It's fine, you know. I mean, that's it's it's not really my business because I'm not from that country. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that one, Chief. You want to run that one by me again? Not uh, not too sure of that one. Israel should be involved in the Syrian conflict. Do I think Israel should be involved in the Syrian yeah, conflict? Yeah, neighbor. Do you think they should be involved in the conflict? Why should they be involved in the conflict? It's their next door neighbor, like Golan Heights disputes. Uh, you know, they've had uh, <laughs> multiple years. Dude, they've got way yeah, too many people in this call. Involved, yes or no? My God. I, when you say they should be involved, like, that can mean so many different things. Like, do I think they should be involved? In any capacity. Gibber jabber. It's not gibber jabber. I'm trying to it's IR gibber jabber. It's CFR gibber jabber. I don't think that Israel should be trying to mess anything, like, to be involved directly in any of the internal politics of Syria. No, if that's what you're asking. Who's internal politics? Should they be involved, like, militarily at all? I just said no. Like, it, they should no, be sure, defend their own borders, do whatever you want, but I don't think they should okay. be, like, necessarily involved in other capacities. Okay. Uh, is there anyone else who wants to debate us? Because no one's, like, requesting. People this is the most boring. Like, Israel yeah, should defend itself in Syria. Israel should really defend itself in Syria. That's, that's what Israel should be doing. 
I'm not going to break the OS in here, I promise. <laughs> um, hold on, let's see who else is... Uh, there are a lot of people criticizing us, and they're not requesting. Well, it's because, it's because it's because it's because uh, because you guys are easy to make the fun of. Transgender came in moments ago and said that uh, we were right, even though they were attacking us on Twitter. They came in and hmm, I asked them, what I she said. said well, I don't can you know. tell me whether or not Dilhan Omar supports terrorists in Syria? And it was like, well, I guess if I'm being generous, yes. Okay, there we have it. You know, the like probably the biggest hater of all who admits that we were right. So true. Buddy. Hold on. Yeah. Does anyone else want to debate us, Senator? Uh, Demetrius uh, and then Sovereign. Hold on, it's hard for me. Like my Twitter space thing is glitching. So can you Demetrius, guys go? Yep. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Hi everybody. So you got a great space going on. I, I actually am not here to argue with you. I actually agree with you on okay. the vast majority of the things you say. But I did want to ask you a question though on something. I used to support. I was tricked in the beginning to support like the the progressive movement within the Democratic Party. I figured out the hard way that it was all bullshit basically, and that you probably have more progressive people in the in the Republican Party at the moment than you do in the Democratic Party. I mean, progressive does not mean only LGBTQ rights. We're talking about like important stuff after the economy and so on and so forth. But do you think that people like Ilhan Omar were ever like, do you think that she changed within her time as a politician? Do you think that in the beginning she had different objectives and then she was like, okay, this is how this is over here. So I'm going to have to change to survive. Or do you think she was always full of shit? I, I think she was always full of shit alongside like AOC and Rashida Tlaib. Her criticism of APAC was not criticism of Israel. Um, she was trying to sort of virtue signal and appeal to Muslims and also other anti-interventionists by framing her, uh, her criticism of APAC as, as a criticism of Israel. But she does work with Zionists. It's just a different Zionist group. J Street. I, I can answer the question very, very simply. Go ahead. Very, very simply. You know, everyone can point to, oh, AOC did it USAID work in Africa and a regime change country. Okay, okay. You can point to all this bullshit, or you can just understand the simple fact that if you actually ever once in your life care about these issues, issues of war and peace, issues of, you know, the global centers of power and, you know, these war crimes that are being committed with our taxpayer dollar, if you've ever once cared about them in your entire life, you would never go to the most powerful decision-making body on the face of this planet and cast your support for that to continue and to be exacerbated. And that's exactly what all of these people who claim to hold these issues so near and dear to their heart did. As soon as they, not, in, not only got into Congress, but as soon as they won their primaries, this is what they uh, set course in the direction of doing. So no, I don't think that they ever cared. I don't think that they ever were serious about this stuff. And I think their actions prove it. Do you, what about the point that you've, you've got all these people on the, on the so-called progressive side, and they're talking about you know, doing things to make the world better, so, supposedly, which they never do actually. But like, it's all about democracy, democracy this, democracy that. But democracy clearly does not work in some countries. So like, when are we going to finally fucking understand that the U.S. First of all, it's, it's not our job to impose into other places, but also that just because democracy may work in some places, it doesn't mean it'll work everywhere. That, that's not why they're doing this, right? That's just how they sell it to. Of course, course I understand they, that. They, yeah, so it doesn't make a difference. Even if Elon Omar, Omar really believed it, in my opinion, where there's smoke, there's fire. When she has multiple marriages and arguably committed immigration fraud, when there's videos of alleged ballot harvesting in Minnesota, the intelligence made up, would get to her. Made up, no made up racist nonsense. Believe, if her option is. Talk about about jibber jabber. Of fortune and being celebrated by progressives for doing shit or spending the, the rest of her days in a prison or being deported back to Somalia, she's going to do what the state tells her to do. I mean, this is much more intricate. The stuff you're looking at is surface there is really superficial and surface level. These people are just figureheads. They're, 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 they can rotate them in or out. If Biden steps down because of these classified documents, whoever steps in is going to push the same shit because they're all compromised. But the prodigal, you know Chuck thinks he's CIA. Yeah, I don't. I, I, do, I do have a question, though, on that, um, what the um, prodigal, prodigal just said. There's always a deep narrative and an end goal that they all have. But in order to push it, they have to create the superficial and narrative. And who cares about what any of these people think? And God damn. I'm wondering, you know, how Why aren't the funny people talking? Can be Put the funny people back on. You guys are doofuses. That are against it. And meaning that, for example, democracy, like facts, right? It does not work everywhere. I want to hear like Samira say a, bu say a bunch of dumb so stuff again. Come on. Hellhole. Let my girl speak. Left and right, terrorism, what have you. So, like, I think that's something else that needs to be discussed at some point. Like, it has to but, be but what are you going to do? You're going to educate these people about post-colonialism, the British mandate, and how they put all these different sects and ethnicities they never fought it out? I mean, the reason why the lines in, in Europe are so squiggly is because drops of blood were spilled for every line. In the Middle East and in Africa, when the colonial powers left, they drew a lot of straight lines, arguably some would say to ensure that these, these nation states could never rise, and, and put a lot of groups in there who basically have hated each other for millennia. So, I mean, to even, how can you, how can you teach, you'd have to educate and teach people these things, and, and most people, especially nowadays, don't even have the attention span for it, or too, too much of a ideologues even to listen right that's exactly what it is their ideologues well anyway th thank thank you guys for for the for the conversation and uh continue on it's uh, it's great stuff thank you appreciate it your... mary do you really you really think ilhan omar is pro-israel i wouldn't use the term pro-israel but she is aligned with you know the progressive zionist faction not the um you know, not really i mean like, i know you say j street, street whatever they said like one APAC night and she attends j street conferences what are, what are you even saying wait what about apac She's anti APAC. She criticizes APAC, but she's pro J Street. Most so most of the two... Zionist organizations are against her, Samira. Like J Street's like J Street kind of an anomaly. Her. What are you saying? J Street endorses her. J Street is an anomaly. You know, I don't. Like I think that they're the, they're like, like the second most powerful after APAC. Yeah, they're, 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 they're 100%. They 100 percent. The RJC, APAC, the what's the other fucking name? Nuance, nuance. But but the, the thing is, uh, I've watched. I've literally watched this happen. 
The problem is that all of these so-called progressives, they were in a dilemma, right? Because they couldn't associate with the uh, old age, traditional, you know, Israel lobby. They found themselves in a conundrum. You know, it's like the John Mearsheimer types. They had all thoroughly exposed the Israel lobby. And so this J Street became a conduit for the Israel lobby, for the progressives in the Democratic Party to exercise the same exact policy under the guise of, you know, human rights and not being as pro-Israel. But they get the same exact policy passed and they team up on the same exact bills. Yeah, they're basically just anti-Netanyahu because Netanyahu is this right-wing Zionist. They're against right-wing Zionism. They're not. Hey, didn't, she, didn't she vote against the, uh, the Iron Dome funding? And shit like that. I recall that happening. I mean, to be fair, I mean, the Lebanese, the Jordanians, and the Egyptians they don't want the Palestinians either. I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah, and also, um, there was a, a bill that she introduced. It was the Combat Islamophobia Bill, and then in it, there was like a little caveat denouncing the BDS movement. So it's like, oh my gosh. And, I mean, uh, and so, so this is. I said I don't remember because off the top of my head I don't remember. I follow the squad closely, but here I have it. Squad votes to give Israel 3.3 billion military aid, including Ilhan Omar, who spoke out against it in May. So that was August 15th. That was stripping out the the Iron Dome funding, wasn't it? Because usually it's 3.8 or the, like the four fifth billion, right? Yeah, but she but they eventually went on to vote and prove the Iron I Dome mean, if funding. You can, if you can reduce the funding, that's better than getting the full funding. No. But they 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 did end up passing the Iron Dome funding. Uh, well, I don't think she voted specifically for the Iron Dome. And, and also, you know how they, they coordinate their votes, the squad, to like make certain statements, but then uh, and at the end, they like get it passed. Jackson, I think you can explain that, how they how they do that. They have a record. It's, of it's the rotating villain strategy. It's like, yeah. you know, one week, I'm, I'm sure everyone's aware of this, but like one week, you know, uh, AOC will be the one that gets to stand up against the establishment and be the loner of one of two votes that's cast against the establishment position. Uh, and then the next week, it's Rashida Tlaib. And they do this because it makes their constituents believe that they have some semblance of nuanced positions where they'll come out and speak out against the establishment. But in actuality, every bill gets passed. And the only reason why they're doing this is to make them look like temporary heroes. But okay, but wait, hang on. The here. useful, the uselessness of that level of optical like voting is literally why people told you to fuck off with the whole force the vote thing. Because you understand it's purely performance. Like that's it's this. I, I, to be honest, I would have been pro force the vote if I thought that it would meant if it would have meant anything other than oh we get a little visibility for like you know one of our issues like I don't know dog I think I think most Americans are aware of the concept of Medicare for all I I really don't think that that's what needs to happen if you can't get like a meaningful political like coalition or meaningful political pressure in Congress, then there's no reason to care what people in Congress think about force the vote if it's not close, which it wouldn't have been. It would have been like a, a decisive loss, but it would have been a performative loss. This is like how everybody's always like, oh, I'm, you know, we're, we're raising awareness for this issue or that issue. I'm aware of it. Everybody's aware of these issues. Awareness is not the problem. It just it just seems like nonsense to me. Like who big who care moment. Of the so what she maybe maybe she didn't vote for the uh, extra funding for Iron Dome and uh, the uh, the airstrike campaign. And she uh, openly like, criticizes it too. I mean I just posted one. Yeah, of but if you openly criticize it and then you vote to approve the, the three point three billion, what does it matter? If it's well, well arguably is that the Iron Dome defensive stuff? I mean it's a little bit different than I understand what you're saying, but I think. You look well, at these yeah, but she's still against it. She's still against it, even though it's defensive. Yeah, I'm just I'm adding to your point. I mean, it's not... I think our personal opinions on what the Iron Dome is, I think that's irrelevant. Um, she is, she tries to grift and pretend she's anti-Israel, but then she votes that in favor of Israel, and then, like, her supporters buy it up and, like, heat Star it up. Star Tribune, hold on, Star, oh, God damn it. Okay. Star Tribune article, Omar, one of few voting no on Iron Dome defense funding. Yeah, but yeah and voted, then she's anti-BDS, so, like. She voted for the three Is she anti-BDS, though? I don't know if that's actually true. Yeah, I have it. I have it in her, like, legislation. And I, she I, voted, she voted for the 3.3 billion after, like, trash the idea of it but the other thing is with the iron dome someone said the iron dome is defensive the iron dome bill in particular this is what a lot of people left out when they were talking about it and why i got so upset over aoc because she said well you know i cried on the house floor and i changed my vote because it's it's defensive and blah 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 but the 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 one billion that was allocated for the iron dome actually included another funding package within the one billion not just for the iron dome is also for operation guardian of the walls uh, and a portion of the one billion was set aside for that that's the campaign of Israeli airstrikes on Palestine, and that's money for their airstrike program against the Palestinian health. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, article, I'm not, I'm not article here. Ilhan Omar sees a spotlight to push pro BDS resolution. Uh, she introduced a bill supporting a movement to boycott Israel over its actions towards Palestinians. I mean, this is and then, just, she, and then she adds that in the combat Islamophobia bill. She, so she, add, she added that. She specifically added something that. Was yes, anti- yes. I don't think she's not pro BDS. This is just wrong. Okay, well, like but again, I'll, I'll just like I'll just like bring back the point again. Who cares if she has a resolution that's not going to affect anything about BDS when she voted for three point three billion for Israel? Yeah, my issue is I don't want money going to other countries, especially now. Yeah, I'm against America. all foreign aid. Eliminating all this shit, like I don't want it going anywhere, especially since these globalist NGOs control everything. I mean, look what happened in Haiti. <laughs> I'm against all foreign aid. That rules. Plus, 
And what do we got? We got the, the Clinton Foundation's toxic uh, trailer homes. Like, this, this is the thing. It, it's a money laundering campaign. All this, even NATO expansion in Eastern Europe, all these countries are corrupt. They just want somebody else to buy more of their arms, and then we're stuck coming in when they have their own conflicts. So this is just not what America needs at this moment. Yeah, and also, like, there is an effort to portray her as anti-Israel or, like, critical of Israel because they want to keep, you know, leftists on board. And, you know, I think that's important context to remember, but, like, if we want to actually go into her stances, we have to look at these uh, pieces of legislation and the language that they include because um, she also um, portrayed her primary opponent as, like, pro-APAC. And, you know, there were all these articles in the media saying, oh, like, APAC is trying to get rid of Ilhan Omar. You know, what message does that send? That she is a threat to APAC, meaning she's a threat to Israel. So there's, like, a media campaign uh, underway to, you know, specifically portray her in that way. But I'm, I'm looking for the... Um, anti-BDS thing right now. And, you know, um, Ilhan Omar is also very selective with who she wants to send arms to and who she doesn't, because it seems like she's okay with sending arms to uh, Ukraine and other countries, but uh, not Israel. Like, I, I find that hypocritical, but... Jackson, she is, okay. she, is she, is she is okay, though. She is okay. She sent, th sent $3.3 billion over to them. Like, she is okay with sending whatever over to this country. Which is insane, right? Because when you think about it, Biden won't even lift the emergency pandemic order, even though both the House and the Senate have voted to, to remove it, because if they do, you're going to have record defaults in student debt. Like, you want your money going there, or do you want to actually deal with, with the debt slavery that higher education is putting Americans in? Like, it, it's a zero-sum equation. Yeah. We, well, don't, we don't have funds for everybody. What I've never understood is, it's like, I, I know everyone tries, like the, the you know, person that was debating us earlier, the, the autumn person, um, everyone tries to say, oh, well, Congress is not a zero-sum game and blah, blah, blah. You have to make concessions here and there. Again, like, like I just said moments ago, it's like, if you're going to do all the work and take all, you're going to shoulder all the, uh, you know, the pains of everyone across the world to get your, yourself into Congress and make decisions on behalf of the entire world, why would you ever take one vote that even contradicts with your innate values? Like, you say, oh, she's got a resolution, but she voted for the $3.3 It's like, if you really care about this stuff, if you're really not pro-Israel, you wouldn't send $3.3 .3 billion over to them. Wasn't, wasn't this part of the negotiation for them to stop, like, the $735 million arms sale, the emergency arms sale to Israel? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think so because then it, it two, literally two weeks, this was two, part of a thing. But then two, two weeks two. later, it didn't. Well, it didn't work then because two weeks later they they passed the one billion for the Operation Garden of, Garden of the Walls in the Iron Dome. Yeah, they got hoodwinked. So they tried to stop it as part of that sixty-two billion dollar package. No, they did, they, did they, they, get, did they get, stop did they get hoodwinked. Did they get hoodwinked? They're fucking stupid. They, what do you want me to say? No, no, it's not stupid. These people know exactly what they're doing. Did they get? Yeah, they're bad faith. Or did they do it bad faith exactly to try and gain support from their own uh, support? There's evidence that, in this. Hold on, I'm finding it. That were dwindling. I think support. they're also retarded, but you know. I, I I think they're retarded, but I don't think they're that retarded. So people Come like on. me fled from supporting them because of stuff like this, and they were trying to prevent that. So they said, "Oh, well, we're not going to vote for the for the major package. We're going to get a reduction in the major package, and then we're going to pass it, you know, two weeks later." I mean, they are pretty stupid. I mean, they hate white people and everything uh, Western society is built, yet they uh, tend to like white men a lot, and they're bad stuff. <laughs> Haas was Weird just talking about that before you went to the space. It was funny. I mean, it's kind of like the that, that whole, like, speaker vote thing. Like, they had all the ability in the world to do that themselves. They didn't do it. The Republicans did it, and it's a great success. So I think they're, like, again, they, they were freshmen. That's not they don't have a lot of experience. Stupid. They're retarded. They don't no, know it's not. No, it's not. That's not because they're stupid. You can look through all of congressional history and cite probably at least, like, five examples in which speakership votes alone have been held up for concessions, not to mention all the other must-pass bills that they could have held up throughout uh, the entire, you know, session of Congress. They, I think I, I think I, when I debated Sam Cedar, I think I identified, like, 18 different must-pass bills they could have held up to get concessions from the establishment from the leadership they didn't do it it's not because they're stupid it's because as aoc admitted in her ig live just this week she wants to maintain her uh, her, her relationships with people on the hill and jackson if you want to look at the jumbotron what i just posted that's the uh the uh, anti-bds yeah that, that's like not an unreasonable provision to say none of the funds made available pursuant to the act can be used to promote yeah but your argument was that she was like pro bds i'm i'm well, like, hold, no, no hold on because a section is added into a bill to garner more support so that it doesn't specifically go to bds causes that's not being anti in a combat islamophobia in bill it's 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 part of the bill like it's it's fine it's it's part of this grander like okay no no bds but also no islamophobia like they're trying to play all yeah but it's her. virtue signaling it's virtue signaling it has no yeah, it's like the anti-lynching bill like okay we haven't really had lynching in this country for a long long time but we're gonna pass an anti-lynching sure. bill to make people feel warm and fuzzy sure yeah i agree with that i mean you really think she's she's good faith man i mean everybody in congress is i mean other than a select few is the same shit they want they're the bad faith and stupid yeah but they're not dumb they want the golden parachute when they leave through lobbyists through speeches through whatever it's the same shit all these people always do and what's the first thing Obama did when he left office? He gave a $2 million speech to the big banks he was supposed to break up. I mean, all these people want that payout. If they can't make it through insider trading when they're there, they want to make sure they don't ruffle any feathers. So when they leave, they're going to get their speaking fees. They're going to get their book deal in advance that's never going to be returned. It's just rampant corruption through legal means. Yeah. Usually when you say anti-BDS, I'm thinking of legislation that actively discriminates against people saying like, uh, you know, you can't get contracting jobs. Like on, on a state level, you can't get fucking hurricane relief. That would be what most people would say, Stuff like way. that. Yeah. 
Yeah, so uh, to make my position clear, I mean, I think this squad, they all suck, but I, I actually think AOC is retarded and stupid, but Ilhan Omar, she's cunning. She's clever. I don't think she's as Jesus stupid Christ. as AOC, which makes her, in my view... So what are you trying to say about Somalians? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Rashida Tlaib, she also sucks, but uh, she's not as, as stupid as AOC is. So I, I don't think it's smart for us to just say, like, they're retarded or stupid because I think that they are a very damaging and harmful force considering the amount of influence they have and the fact that, you know, they're literally in Congress. Dimitrios, go ahead. Is that how you pronounce I just, it? I just wanted to say that. Just the fact that she included something or that they included something about BDS in, Islam in an anti-Islamophobia bill just proves your point. Because BDS is not, has nothing to do with anti-Semitism. It's, it's a totally different thing. It has to do with fighting against an oppressive uh, po you know, policy of a certain country that has to do with oppressing the people of, of Palestine. It has nothing to do with anti-Semitism. I mean, like, I, I don't see, like, that, that, that makes your point Take it stronger. Back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just what I want to say, like, it's clear that she is uh, not uh, not practicing what she preaches. Like that's just just ridiculous. Because if every BDS, like every type of thing similar to BDS, was equivalent to some phobia, then the U.S. that's been putting sanctions on God knows how many countries in the world. So are we are we like phobic of Venezuela, phobic of you know countless other countries? Like it doesn't make any sense. It's it's just like it just just the, the result of a really powerful some really powerful lobbyists being able to just pass that and nobody having the stones to resist it basically. Well, yeah, don't we have, like, half of states that have anti-BDS legislation in place? Like, it's one of the most powerful lobbies, like, bar none in the United States. I also want to expand on what I was saying earlier uh, regarding, you know, the whole Israel thing. I just hate how the left has hijacked the Palestine cause. And a lot of these congresswomen, these congresspeople, like, they use Israel as a way to sort of gain uh, support from their audience. So, I mean, I'm, I'm really suspicious when progressives try to use uh, Palestine to grift. And also, um, you now have people with, like, Palestine flags in their bios right next to Ukraine flags in their bios. So it's not, like, a good litmus test to judge their positions on Israel to get, like, a, a, um, a broader uh, understanding of their foreign policy. It's a very, very bad litmus test. And I have something regarding the uh, Iron Dome vote, and I just posted it in the Jumbotron. Um, Biden administration notified Congress of $735 million weapon sale to Israel earlier this month before the violence began, which is four days left in the review process. Uh, and uh, hold on, with a, a, they had like a chance to block the bill, but they didn't until the violence started. And that's when AOC and Bernie were like, oh, we need to stop um, the sale. But they knew it was futile. So, yeah. Well, yeah, because it's a bipartisan effort. Like they have enough votes between Republicans and Democrats to get whatever kind of aid they want to Israel funded. Yeah. Especially if it's standalone. I mean, if you include it in a larger bill, it can maybe be stopped. But if you make it standalone, there's like no chance. Yeah, I mean, unless there are people who want to debate us on Ilhan Omar's uh, backing of like terrorist groups, then I think that I think you really think that Assad election was legit? Over ninety-two percent. You think that was real? Um, there were international observers present, so not it, it, really. You know, I mean, they excluded like all the major like Western democracies from the observing the elections. Uh, not necessarily. We have info. I mean, the entire European Union, the Union, I think, was uh, excluded. No. No, I mean, let me look into it. I know. I'm that pretty sure that's the case. Like, mm. Why do you look to like Western oh, observers to determine oh. whether or not? And then, I mean, I don't know. Oh. I know whenever I see, like, oh, the observers were Iran and Russia and some guy. Yeah, you notice? You, know, you don't America. think it's you don't think it's weird that this is selectively applied? As in, it's only when uh, like an enemy country holds an election where they decide, what oh, you know, this election what about is illegal. So if they get over ninety-two percent in the middle of a civil war yeah i'm gonna be skeptical i'm sorry you can be skeptical if you want but then you know you should also not be selective about it nuance anyway uh jackson left so i think that we can close the space pause are you do you have anything else to say Your lord finally uh, yeah why well, calls are running away from you right now i know <laughs> that's right. by my question they had no answer <laughs> <laughs> No, but, like, I think it's an important point. You can't only determine or decide whether or not, like, elections in enemy countries are illegitimate. Or no, illegitimate. I called elections here illegitimate, too. Well, that's good. That's good. Good for oh, you. Yeah. Um, Over 92%. Totally legitimate. That's your position, Samira? That's not my position. I think that you're, your you're forcing what me is to take a position right now. How do you take a position? I think that I'm going to go... Had to hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. everything you have on whether it was legit or not legit, what do you think? I would, wow, have, I to look at, I would have to look at the reports... Um, made by these international observers first, and I would have to like study it further. Mm. I don't think it matters. I really yeah, don't. Really it's it's not very good on that. Who the fuck cares? Do we need another pretext? Yeah. To be in another war? No, I'm just saying it was brought up, and I'm like, this is nonsense. <laughs> this is nonsense. Notice, by the way, <laughs> these people moralize so hard about standing by your principles. Several times during this discussion, they've all laughed and chuckled along and said, "And said, who cares? Who cares? Who cares? It's not my country. Who cares?" Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Such principles, you know? Really, really feeling it. Action, let's be honest. But it doesn't matter. It's not our place to determine. It, it, that's the position. It's not our place. Don't bring up place. that it was a totally legitimate mm. election with all these observers. Like, that's bullshit. But would the end result be different, though? I'm not sure. I don't know. 
Well, look, look, what happened, look, look what happened. Over ninety-two percent. Nuance. Look at what happened in Brazil. You know, um, Biden preemptively declared um, the elections free and fair, and then, as you know, that there was like fuckery going on behind the scenes. Of course, there was fuckery. They bribed people from the rural areas to like go in mass numbers to the polls for Lula. Right. All right. Well, like at least you acknowledge that, because I mean, we don't have the best, uh, I guess, uh, decision-making process when it comes to determining whether. Did you see Maduro's speech he gave about Lula and what they're going to try to do now? <laughs> I did not. But of course, the Latin American left—they're going to support these like pink tide leaders. It's Jesus. And well, also, the, you know, the, like the, the Biden administration. Their diet oh, by the way, up de decrying the Latin American left. What happened? To, it's not our place. Man, that went out the window real quick. There, damn, real quick. From. <laughs> From it's not our place to yeah f yeah fuck these people from these other countries for disagreeing with us. Damn, shorty. Okay. And to Brazil too. Oh my gosh. Anyway, but the Biden administration right now is engaging with not just Venezuela but also Cuba. Like they're opening their embassies back up, but they're not willing to do the same thing with like Iran or, or Afghanistan. So I mean that's interesting. And at the end of the day, these pig tied governments, whether it's like Lula or like Petro. Um, or Boric in Chile, they all, I guess, align with U.S. interests and, and globalist interests of, like, the EU and everything. So, um, yeah, it's unfortunate. Why is CPAC trending? CPAC is trending? Is it? That's what I've been told. What's going on? Uh-oh. Let's, let's click it. What's going on? I hope it's not, like, some sort of, like, personal scandal or sex scandal, because that's when... Maybe it's related to the Schlapp thing? Accuser sues Matt Schlapp for sexual battery, so I guess now it's going to a lawsuit. Good. Oh, yeah, that's why it's trending. Oh. Yeah, I mean... Hold on. Do you have any, any information on that? Yeah, he's a low life. Yeah, I mean, you know the allegation that came out against Schlapp uh, recently, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I guess now the accuser's suing him for sexual battery or whatever. Listen, Don Lemon had to pay out that bartender. He put his hand down his pants. So let, him get, let, this guy, let this guy get some payout. Yeah, I, I imagine he probably doesn't want to go through discovery and all that. Maybe they'll Oh, is Schlapp married? So this is a male accuser? Yes, he's married. Yeah, Schlapp is married. He's, he's got Mercedes, his wife. God, there's so many grifters and shells. I mean, let's... Well, this is a recorded space, so... Yeah. I don't give a shit. Let him hear it. All right, I'm going to bring TriMan on. Oh, my goodness. We have Ryan Dawson. Welcome, Ryan Dawson. Who's that? Oh, Prodigal, you're not OG. You don't know Ryan Dawson? Yeah, I don't I do know him either. Oh, thank you. I'm sad that uh, Jackson is no longer here because I wanted to ask him a question regarding his tweets. Um, oh, I thought you were going to ask him for dating advice. No, no. See, the thing is, I was wondering if he launched some pretty gigantic, uh, you know, launched some pretty gigantic claims against Ilhan Omar saying that... Yeah, they're all true. Well, there's really... I mean, oh, it's all he, true. He says that she supported Al-Qaeda, but there's... I've not seen any direct ties. That was what was so... <laughs> why, why do you say it like that? What? Say, say all right, well... Say so the, okay, well, Tryman, I think that when I end the space, you can go back to the beginning of the space where Jackson answered this very question. So... Okay, um, well, wait, so he just know, restated a bunch of claims, though. Really he didn't really answer, answer I mean, I can talk about it because why he believes that stuff. Well, why does she have to educate yeah, you with her own space? Everything like, just for him. No, yeah, just well, I know I'm special, but what I'm trying to say is it's one thing to criticize rebel groups that have committed very, very bad things, but to simply say that they are connected to Al-Qaeda is kind of is a huge scratch in my opinion. Why do you, why do you keep saying it like that? Saying it like what? It, all right. You, so, like you, you, do, you do realize this isn't limited to Syria, right? In Afghanistan, the Taliban is taking on Al Qaeda and ISIS. Tweets, tweets like, they, they, like most of most of the gains against them in Syria, yeah, some were through the Kurds, but most have been through the the, the regime. And, and it's similar in uh, in Afghanistan. If you actually look at some of the releases, uh, we were basically the Taliban's air force in a lot of areas of the country, even though we we're at war with them because they were combating ISIS and uh, some other. Uh, yeah, and it's still doing that. Like, Look, Tryman, I mean, her own community has called her out for this. I'm not going to relay the entire message here because we discussed it for like three hours. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to end this space. You can go back and listen to it if you want an answer to your question. But I'm going to start a non-recorded space. So if you guys want to join that, please. So, okay. Right. Um, oh, Adam's I'm, actually starting a space right now. Oh, is he? Is he? What's the topic? What's uh, the, whatever you guys want. Chill space. Yeah. All right. We'll start, All right. I guess. We'll All right. Have fun, guys. Thanks for we'll joining. Yeah. All right. Bye. Jesus Christ. An end. Into over the her suffering. support for terrorism. And she basically tried to use the excuse of like Islamophobia to silence. Right. Them. Okay. That was from earlier. All right. What did we learn? These people are insane, <laughs> liars, reactionaries, etc., etc. What a bunch of hooey. Oh, man. I mean, I knew there wasn't going to be anything of substance. I'm being completely honest. I had a strong suspicion. That there was not going to be any substance, but wow, that was uh, that was really something, wasn't it, gang? I feel like the dude in Independence Day that gets shoved up to the window and says, "Release me!" So true, so true. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that's uh, wow.
That's crazy. What's the alien talking when it possesses him? Truly impressive, their inability to be coherent. Well, I mean, it, if you think about this from, like, a human behavioral standpoint, it makes a lot of sense, right? Like, yeah, sure, idiot, like, actually speaking, obviously that's not coherent. Ideologically, it's it seems sporadic and uh, impossible to like it like impenetrable you know what i mean um but it makes a lot of sense because they have clearly certain impulses about certain groups of people and they have even you you can even tell sometimes like the the sense of like guilt of the of, of what the consequence will be kind of sets in and they start, start to go Oh yeah, oh yeah, she's married to a white man. Oh yeah, she's married to a white man. Oh yeah, she's married to a white man, so she can't be a real Muslim. Uh, but, oh yeah, and, and and they'll call us racist for this. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, they'll really call us racist for this. Ha 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 ha. Oh yeah, by the way, she's married to a white man. And it's like, alright, bro. It's... <laughs> it's... It's... It's like... Clearly... Uh... <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes people say things and they're saying it for themselves, even though they're saying it to you, if you know what I mean. And uh, there's a lot of that going on over there. So that was rough. That was a rough start to stream, if I'm being completely honest. To jump straight into that. But, uh, I don't know. I'm glad we listened to it. Probably the most we'll ever listen to these people, because they don't really have any... All that interesting on offer most of that to be honest i found very very dull so uh you know happy to add my commentary to it most of it was just very stupid nonsense seems goofy who cares you know and i mean that's what they say too every every time they you know go on a diatribe about like having like principles and voting with your principles and stuff and then somebody points out like Hey, you know, it's a little odd that you guys think this, and like, so what about the consequences of of this and this place for these people? They just go like, "Oh, who cares? Uh, who cares? Uh, who cares?" Anyway, yeah, who cares? It's like, okay, well, I thought we were being principled here. No, I I thought that was what we were doing. Maybe I was wrong. I don't know. Uh, might have had the wrong idea about some of you guys. You telling me Samira Khan, Jackson Hinkle, Prahaz aren't very principled and are actually completely unprincipled as demonstrated by their own advocacy of their own beliefs? Wow. That's crazy. You ever done DMT?